South Philly, where it's breezy and cool today. I'm Dave Sims and Todd Blackledge. And our game today features a couple of struggling programs desperately looking for a victory. Well, you're exactly right, Dave. And, and this is a game I think both coaching staffs look at and say their teams match up and can win the game. It's a, it's a game that they probably circled on their schedule a couple months ago. Both teams really needing a win today. Indeed, both teams at the bottom of the heap in college football. And we had an opportunity to speak with both the coaches, Johnny Majors and Ron Dickerson, about the past and the future for their respective programs. Certainly, there's been a tremendous amount of positive uh, aspects to draw from. Uh, I think you find out what people are made of when they're faced with adversity, and things are not always going the way you'd like. We have a football team that knew we had a struggle going into the season. I was concerned about us winning as many as one game, uh, which we won a couple already. Uh, I feel like our team has learned to overcome some adversity and has learned not to give up. And playing the amount of freshmen that we're playing and as much as they're playing is, is a tremendous positive. We have a, a punter in John Shea that's a walk-on that averaged 42, 43 uh, yards a punt. That's a positive. Uh, there's so many positives that we pick out week in and week out. We see the improvement of, of our defense. We see Lance Johnston. We moved him from a down position to a stand-up position, which was a tremendous positive for him and for our football team. There's an opportunity at the University of Pittsburgh that a lot of that many schools don't have a, a chance to offer. Uh, there's an opportunity to play soon and uh, immediately for a program that has had great prestige and has the potential to come back uh, to the top again and to live, go to school in an outstanding city, one of the most exciting cities in the world, not just in America. We're not going to change any difference in our uh, selling pitch in recruiting this class as we did last year. The kids that we're recruiting this year, the student athletes we're recruiting this year, are going to have an opportunity to play. They're going to have an opportunity to play big time football. They're going to have an opportunity to get a degree from an outstanding institution. And uh, we're going to win. We're going to turn it around. And we're going to be very positive of them. We're not going to lie to them. We're going to be honest with them uh, all the way across the board. And, and that's the way you, you treat recruiting. You have to be honest. As far as the timetable, there's nobody smart enough right now in the country or anywhere else to figure out how long it would take to turn a program that's been really down and out and destitute for a few years. We hope to have immediate credibility, which I think we have had, but as far as winning a championship, I couldn't tell you that. We hope to be more competitive each year, and the better football players we get, the sooner we get them, the more competitive we'll be. And if you can recruit at Manhattan, Kansas, where I went to school, I tell you, and I love it, if you can recruit great players to go to Manhattan, Kansas, you can recruit outstanding players to come to, to Philadelphia and, and play at Temple University. So uh, it's going to take a good three, four years to turn this thing around. Some freaking honest comments from both coaches involved in today's game. Now, while both teams have had some brutal seasons, they do have marquee players. Well, whenever you have a team that's struggling, unfortunately, some of the individuals get overlooked. But we have a couple great ones today. For Pittsburgh, running back Curtis Martin. I mean, he has missed a game this year, but he's still been involved in 42% of the offensive plays for Pitt. He's averaging 101 yards a game. And, and it's really no mystery when you play Pitt. This is not a team that passes the ball very well. They're going to give the football consistently to Curtis Martin. When you talk about Temple, you talk about their outside linebacker, Lance Johnstone. Lance is a big-time player. Coach Dickerson mentioned that they moved him from the down line back to a linebacker. He can run from sideline to sideline, and he creates big plays. He's got an interception. He's also forced four fumbles on the season. I mean, he's a big-time player. No question about it. There's your setup here from Vet Stadium. We'll be back with our kickoff in a couple of minutes. We'll do that after we get back. Flag stiff at the top of the stadium, 48 degrees. Look at the wind, 28 miles per hour partly sunny is the forecast and we're under pretty favorable skies at least at this moment time now for the rolling rock chalk talk and here's Todd Blackwood okay today in the in the ball game one of the keys is which team's going to defend the run the best both these teams like to try to run the ball Pitts giving up 250 yards a game Temple 287 yards in their run defense whoever defends the run the best today will probably win the game turnovers uh, Temple coming into the game has a minus 13 turnover ratio. Pitt actually does a very nice job protecting the football. In order for Temple to win today, they must protect the football. And finally, this game and how they play today, both teams, is going to set the tempo 
for a lot of memories over the offseason, all through the winter workout program, spring football. The lasting memory of, of being on the football field will be how they play in the ball game today. It's very important to go out on something positive this game. Johnny Majors, head coach for Pittsburgh, Ron Dickerson, in his first year here at Temple. Very enthusiastic gentleman. And has a lot of fans, a lot of people rooting for him here in the Philadelphia area and around college football. Pittsburgh won the toss. They will receive to our right. Look at the season, the series history. 18 4 and 1 in favor of Pitt. Pitt has won two straight and four of the last five. And they have a pretty impressive record here at the Vet, too. You know, Ron brought up a good point in the, in the open when we asked him about rebuilding any. He, brought to mind the, the situation at Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas. And that is truly a program that has been down and, and was considered the worst football program in America just a few short years ago. They're going to a bowl game this year. So uh, a, a big change out there. And, and of course, Ron Dickerson hoping to see the same kind of change here in Philadelphia. Number 47, Richard Mastin. He of the unique haircut, which we hope to show you at some point during the course of the afternoon. <laughs> the shade it has the tight fade on the side with a big ponytail on top. Jay Jones out of Warminster, Pennsylvania, just north of uh, Philadelphia, making a homecoming today. Jay's a sophomore and has done a terrific job returning kicks. And uh, no question that Pitt has seen in films that Mastin has not been getting his kicks particularly deep. Jay Jones is standing at the 15-yard line. The wind is going to play, uh, definitely going to play a part today. Neither one of these teams throw the football exceptionally well. And, and when you have windy conditions, it not only affects your, your throwing the football, it also affects your kicking game in uh, rather dramatic fashion. So it'll be interesting to see how these teams play, particularly how they operate going into the wind. Set for action, a final game of the 93 season for both ball clubs, and indeed it is a short kick. Jones bobbles, has some trouble, and number 35 fall on it. There's Patton falls on it, and Pitt will put it in play with John Ryan as the starting quarterback. John completing 55% of his passes. Reuben Brown, dominant left tackle. Curtis Martin, one of the finest running backs in the country, about 100, 100 yards per game. The first and 10 for Pitt at the 23-yard line. Curtis Martin, the deep back. He gets the call, no surprise. Gets to the corner, stopped there by Lance Johnstone. So a meeting of the two marquee players, three-yard gain for Martin. Dean Jones helps on the stop. James Spears, the former basketball player, he's a four standing at six foot six. He can knock down a lot of passes on that defensive line. Robert McWilliams, pretty swift in the backfield. Had a great spring game. Provides tremendous leadership for Ron Dickerson's ball club. Balls at the 26 yard line. Now both teams will claim the other side moved. Number 93 is Scott Holland for Temple. T. Wang Lloyd also moved. Dead ball, offside, defense. That one could have gone either way because the tight end for Pitt moved. That drew one of the Temple defenders off, but then right in the middle, they jumped off sides in the center. Lawson Malika for Pitt, very alert. When he felt the penetration across the line of scrimmage, snapped the ball, get the five yards right away. Ball's at the 31-yard line, second down and two. Give it to the up back, Washington. Not much going on there. You call it a no gain. Maurice Washington. Washington, Pennsylvania. T. Wang Lloyd brought him down as Ryan looks for his third down play being relayed in from the sideline. Johnny Majors in his second city. And he put the iron to the staff and the team coming off the loss at BC to BC last week. Third down and two. 
Wishbone set everybody in tight. Curtis Martin with the call. Looks like he's got enough yardage for the first down. Indeed he did. Good block by Maurice Washington. You're going to see Pitt run behind Reuben Brown a lot today. There's number 78 working on T. Lang Lloyd. Doesn't get a great block on Lloyd, but enough. Gets enough of a push to get the first down. But he's uh, definitely going to be an All-American candidate when he comes back next year for his senior season out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Pitt will run over the left side pretty much this afternoon. Balls at the 34. Ryan's going to throw and get it to Curtis Martin. He turns it up field, and he's got close to first down yardage. John Swift, number 51, the first to hit him. But they'll do anything to get Curtis Martin the ball. A little flip pass there. Well, you want to try to move him around your formations, get him in different spots. You want to get him the football quickly and let him, you know, when he gets it out there, it's just like a running back out trying to make one guy miss. And Curtis Martin has the ability to make a defender miss. You get him the ball out in the wide side of the field, out in the flat, let him make one guy miss, and you turn a very short throw into a, to nearly a 10-yard gain and another first down. They're measuring on the far side. And he's about two or three inches short. So that'll bring up a second and very short for the Pitt Panthers. Panthers last week beaten up pretty badly by Boston College, 33 to nothing. Other action in the Big East Conference this afternoon. Take a look at Virginia Tech and Virginia. That's a very heated rivalry. That game going on down at Charlottesville. BC at Notre Dame. BC trying to make amends for the blowout loss at Notre Dame last year. And Miami and West Virginia. That's a very important game at 3.30 this afternoon. Second down and one for the Panthers. Martin spins. Didn't get the first down. Did not get the first down. Robert McWilliams is there, number 22, and Lance Johnson on number 54 finishes him off. Good play by Temple. Well, normally when Curtis Martin bounces it to the outside, he's going to find room to make the first down. He's a very instinctive runner, but you see when he makes the spin move right there, right on the outside waiting for him, the cornerback, Robert McWilliams. That's an excellent play by the cornerback, maintaining his outside contained position, not letting the running back bounce outside of him. Ball still at the 44. No gain on that play. Temple in tight. Give it to Martin. He's got the first down this time. Second effort. Picked up a couple more yards. John Swift, number 51, is there for Temple. But first down for the Panthers. And again, you see they run over that big left side behind their left tackle, Reuben Brown. That, that's where Pitt is going to try to make their money today, running the football. Temple has not been able to stop the run. They go with the power eye formation. Have two backs leading in there. That's Chad Dukes, number 40. Gets a nice block on the corner. But again, they're going to run behind the big guy, Reuben Brown. This is the opening drive of the ball game. 11-12 left in the first period. No score. Here's Ryan. Get it outside to Martin in a hurry with room. Get the block downfield. Picked up the first down. Down up at the 35-yard line. Another first down for the Panthers. Tony Angela brings him down after a gain of 16. And a very alert play by John Ryan because Lance Johnstone is going to come on a blitz from the outside. And when John Ryan reads the blitz, he knows all he has to do is get the ball to his back. That's his hot receiver. Flip it out to the tailback. You see they're trying to cover him with a defensive end. That's James Spears trying to run from inside out to pick up the back. Can't do it. Excellent read by John Ryan. Here's Johnstone right on the corner, and that tells the quarterback he's unblocked. I've got to beat the blitz by getting rid of the football. Straight dive play to the fullback. That's Maurice Washington. Pretty good gain, about five yards. Ted McDuffie, number 38, was there for Temple. It's up five. Ball's at the 30-yard line. But both coaches were very honest, honest in their assessment of their programs and uh, the directions that the programs will have to take. Ryan, so Martin cuts back. James Spears tripped him up at the 30, but Martin falls ahead, picks up three. 
and not Johnson only got a piece too. Not only is Curtis Martin the kind of guy who can make the big play and, and break off a 70 or an 80 yard run, but the other thing that he does so well, he's always going to get you the positive yards. Even when it looks like he's going to get stopped, he's going to get you three, four, and five yards on a carry. In fact, the one where he bounced out and got hit by McWilliams, that's one of the first times I've ever seen him lose yardage on a play. Tenth play of this drive, which started back at the pit 23. And they give it to Martin, and he gets close to the 25 and shoves back hard. Tony Angelo, number 20, is there, the free safety. Tim Terry also there, number 36. Tony looked like he took a little pop to the stomach there to try to shake that off. We talked about the team that would be able to defend the run the best is probably going to win the game today. We haven't seen Pitt's defense, but so far Temple having a difficult time against this big offensive line of Pittsburgh. You can't expect your linebackers and your defensive backs to make all the plays. They have to get some penetration from their front four. Martin's handled the ball eight of the ten plays for Pitt. And another one. Fumble. And he recovers it. Back at the 29-yard line. Loses a couple on that one. Well, let's take a look at this pitch. John Ryan's going to seat the ball pretty well. The pitch is right on the money, and Curtis Martin, all he did there is took his eyes off the football, was trying to look to where the hole was, where he was going to run with it before he catches it. So he lost three on that. He definitely had a hole. Looking for that daylight on the right side. Let's look by Temple. He's going to come after him. Flip it outside to Martin again. He's there. Got a block. Back to the 20. To the 14. Line, and that's good enough for first down. A 14-yard pickup. Ted McDuffie with the tackle. Well, this is the same play that they hit Martin on a couple plays ago, only to the other side. They're going to blitz from the outside. Ryan Reed's Johnstone coming on the blitz. Nice touch, flipping it out there to his back. And you can see they're trying to cover him from inside out with the linebacker, an inside linebacker, running out. He gets picked off by a couple offensive linemen, and it's clear sailing out there for Curtis Martin. Curtis Martin making John Ryan look good. Ryan's three for three passing for 39 yards, and all of it to Martin. First and 10. Here come the Panthers again on this first down play. First the pile. They get down inside the 10-yard line. Picked up four. Scott Holland, number 93, involved in the play for Temple. When you hear uh, you, you talk in football about having a hot receiver or a quarterback <laughs> having to make a hot read, what we've seen in those two throws to Curtis Martin, that's exactly it, meaning that a guy is coming off the outside in a blitz and no one is there to block him. And so it's up to the quarterback to account for him to throw off that hot blitz and throw it to the hot receiver, who in this case for Pitt is Curtis Martin. Ball just inside the tent. Pitt doing some serious damage with the clock here. 7.54 to go in the first period. T. Lang Lloyd jumped and the center snapped the ball. That was lost in Monica. Well, if you're an offense, this is something you'll take all day long because it's, it's an automatic five yards and it makes offside the first five. defense. Good play by the center, offside, second one in this possession by Pitt, both against Lloyd. And again, you know, the only thing that's dangerous about doing that is the quarterback has to make sure that his hands are always ready to receive the snap. Second down. Because when you give the center the liberty to snap it when he feels the penetration offside, your hand has to be ready to take it because it's going to come earlier than you're anticipating. 14th play of this drive. Second down and one. It's a, almost a free kind of play for Pittsburgh, and they draw him offside again. And it's King Lang Lloyd, number 96. He's claiming. I think we got off movement by Pittsburgh. Chris Stoffick was the guy that moved for Pittsburgh, the left guard, and Sean Carden is one drawn offside. It was drawn over, but play goes against Pittsburgh. This sort of indicative of how both uh, these Good teams have played this year. Full start. A lack of concentration, a little jumpy on the line of scrimmage. You give five, and then you take five back. So, But as you mentioned, Pitt controlling things on the line of scrimmage, controlling the clock, and again, the onus is on the Temple defense to stop the running game. Big offensive line, 6'4", 296. They average from tackle to tackle. Got to get outside with Martin. Comes inside. Maybe gets down to the seven-yard line. Penalty flag on the play. Tony Angelo had to come up from free safety to bring him, bring him down. Uh, 
Duffel came with the blitz Holding that time. Back-to-back -back penalties now on the pit offense. And again, you know, part of the problem is when you're struggling as a football team and you're not scoring a lot of points, Pitt coming into this ball game only averaging 14 points a game, you get into scoring territory, you can't have penalties like this. You get inside the 20, you've got a nice 14, 15 play drive going. You can't holding kill it with holding offense, penalties. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. Killer plays that the Pitt Panthers were looking at a second down and one at the five yard line. That's right. Legal procedure and a hold. Now they're back to the, just inside the 20 yard line at the 18. Well, it's second and 14. Get it to Martin. Draws the crowd, breaks the tackle. He's down to the nine-yard line. Kyle Glasper, the veteran left cornerback, and Tony Angelo make the stop. We said at the top of the show that Curtis Martin's involved in, in the majority of the offense for Pitt. I guess they're trying to make up for that one game that he missed you earlier bet. in the season. Hey, he said 42% of the plays. Looks like they're going for about 92% today. And that, that, to me, that makes it even more impressive what he's been able to accomplish because you know the defenses know that they have the key on him, yet he's still producing. Ryan's completed all his passes to Martin, including this one. But fumble, fumble, it looks like Temple's recovered. They knocked the ball out of the hands of Curtis Martin, and the Owls have recovered. Recovery made by Corey Green, number 49 out of Shawnee High School in Medford, New Jersey. And you know what this is a case of, Dave? This is a case of a guy just being tired. He's been involved in 13 of the last 15 plays. He's a little tired, a little careless with the football, and they strip him, and the defense comes up with a big play. That fumble caused by James Spears. Nicely done. No score here at the vet. 6.26 to go. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Today's Big East football telecast is brought to you in part by your GM Good Wrench dealer. Hey, we want your business. And by Rolling Rock Premium Beer. From the mountain springs to you, safe as it ever was. Bartender, send me down a Rolling Rock. You got it. <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me, Tiger. Okay. Rolling Rock, one spring, one brewery for a fresh, clean taste every time. Can you make that two Rolling Rocks? You got it. Oh, that magic has me in its spell. Oh, that magic that you weave so well. Those icy fingers up and down my spine. The same old witchcraft when your eyes meet mine. Down and down I go, round and round I go. To be a NASCAR Winston Cup champion, you need magic in these parts. And the magic of these parts. Under that old black magic. Old black magic. Black Curtis Martin trying to figure out how he fumbled James Spears the answer, and here's how it happened. Well, I want you to look at the guy on the end of the line there is James Spears, number 88. Now, John Ryan is going to look for Curtis Martin all the way, and Curtis Martin, when he catches the ball, he's not aware of where Spears is. But here comes Spears into your picture, comes from inside, in on the line of scrimmage. Nice job stripping the football out of Curtis Martin, but I really believe that the fact that Curtis Martin was involved in so much of the offense, I think fatigue was as much as anything what caused that fumble. You bet. Charlie Coe, the offensive coordinator of Tell 2, should have the ball on the outside arm. Henry Burris, the quarterback for the outs. First play for Temple. Raphael Mack bounces outside. Finally gets hammered after a gain of five. Raphael Mack, number 28 of Trenton, New Jersey. Here's a look at the offense led by Henry Burris, the freshman out of Oklahoma. From Spyro, Oklahoma, Trey Johnson, the All-American candidate at left tackle. It's a pretty big offensive line that goes 6'4", 290. And Raphael Mack, he'll need a big game today carrying that ball. He's the top rusher for the out. Second down and five. Ball's at the 14-yard line. Inside handoff, Sid Morris. Nothing happening. No game. Tried that trap, and the guard got knocked down. Great penetration by Mike Halifin in there. 
playing a defensive tackle spot as we look at the defensive starters for the University of Pittsburgh. Tom Tumulty, of course, the leading tackler on this football team. Week in and week out, Maurice Williams has been a real surprise out there at the cornerback position. He's a senior, but he's really stepped up his game this year. One of the top players in that secondary. Simple outs with the ball after Pitt stopped itself on a fumble. Pitt went 15 plays, 68 yards, and took 834 off the clock. 35 right here, and a 14 for Burris. Play action, roll out, got a man there, the jump, the drop. He had a receiver at the 32-yard line. It's Ramondo Davidson, the senior, out of Atlanta, Fulton High School. Ramondo Davidson had this play, and he had a, a direct beat on the ball as we watched the play fake. They went with the counter trap fake, and Burris does a nice job faking the football. Now, watch, at the very end of this play, Maurice Williams is going to flash right in front of Ramondo Davidson. He doesn't tip the football, but he just crosses the vision of the wide receiver just enough to break up the play. John Shea to punt for the Owls. Jay Jones deep for Pitt. Jones standing at the 43 of Temple. Good rush. Kick, handle, fumble. Temple should recover. Loose ball at the 30. Big scramble. Pockings all over the place. Won't wait for official word. Big scrum at the bottom. But Temple did recover. So that was a returnable kick. Jay Jones knew it. It was a line drive kick, and he was a little bit too anxious, only a 27-yard punt. And it's the second fumble by Johnny Major's Ball Club this afternoon. And we talked about turnovers, that that would be a key in this ball game. Who protects the football? So far, Pitt has been very careless in two opportunities. No score with 4.44 to go in the first period. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. In the year 23,012 B.C., Lenny, the traveling salesman, rented the first big round wheel from Thrifty at a nice small rate. Today, Thrifty offers outstanding service and great cars like the Plymouth Acclaim. At the in the Philadelphia area, fumbling this punt. Well, Jay Jones, the, the ball got hung up in the wind a little bit. He never cleanly made it. Now, Kenyon Robinson, 18, is going to have a chance to come up with a fumble, but good hustle downfield by James Spears. He created a fumble. This time he comes up with the recovery, and, and all that was was just staying after the play and not quitting on it, and the ball squirted out one more time, and Spears came up with it. James Spears, number 88, two pin fumbles, belying the fact that they're plus seven in the giveaway-takeaway category coming into today's game. Andy Davis, big yard, it's 40. First down, up close to the 45-yard line. Andy Davis picked up 13 out of Ocean City High School in New Jersey. Davis. Doug Whaley had to bring him down. Davis showing a nice little burst here. They just go with the straight toss play, running behind their big right tackle, John Clark, number 74. Sidney Morse, the fullback, leading up in there, and, and a good burst, a good explosion into the hole by Danny Davis. First and 10 now at the 43-yard line. Second possession by Temple. <laughs> Delay to Davis, they go to him again, and good pop as he knocks down one of the DBs at about the 49-yard line. Nice play by Danny Davis. Tom Tumulty with the tackle, five-yard pickup. Virginia Tech on top of the Cavaliers down at Charlottesville. Frank Beamer's got to be happy that he got that field goal from Ryan Williams because Ryan has not had a real consistent year, and... That'll be kidding, uh, critical in the ball game today. A tough one with Virginia. Burris to throw with time. Got a man over the middle. Complete. And it's good for a first down. The Tim Israel, number 15 for the Owls. 18-yard pickup. Timmy out alongside New Jersey. Brother, Steve played for Pitt a couple years ago. Well, Henry Burris is showing me something right here. He stands right in the pocket. You can see the poise that he's got. Even though he's a young freshman, he is showing a lot of poise. And I'll tell you what, he's growing under fire, playing in this football season with Temple, making his fourth start today. And uh, did a nice job staying in the pocket and delivering a strike to Israel. 17-yard pickup. Give it to Danny Davis, finding some good running room on the right side. Danny Davis, Gerald Simpson with the stop, a six-yard gain. 
Well, again, we mentioned at the top of the show, both these teams having a lot of trouble stopping running games of their opponents. And right now, Temple's offensive line getting a good block in there by their center, John Summerday, who they think, the coaching staff here at Temple thinks Summerday will be an All-American candidate next year. He's having a fine season. He's a big guy in there at the center position, 282 pounds. Good day so far for Danny Davis, who didn't start. He's come on in relief for Raphael Mack. Davis again. He is getting some good yardage. He does have the good first. Picks up three on that play. Part of the philosophy, the thinking here for Temple is to spread the defense out. They don't have a tight end in the ball game right now. They have three wide receivers and two back, and all they're doing is spreading the defense out. They get good numbers in there where they can get blocks on them. And you can see, good block by the pullback, Sidney Morris, number 21. Knifes through there, gets a nice cut block on the linebacker. And, and right now, uh, the offensive line doing a good job for Temple, opening up some holes. Here we go with a third down and one. Ball's at the pit 26. Best drive of the afternoon for the Owls. Up the middle, nothing happening. Maybe a gain of one. It could be close to a first down. Good stick, Mike Halepin. For 94, Mike had been on the outside. They moved him inside. Four man front. I don't think there's any question that Ron Dickerson's going to go for it. When you're 0 and 10, th there's no sense in being cautious at this point. And the fans getting into it. Not a real big crowd. Hit fans on the sunny side of the field. It's going to be fourth and inches. Got to get to the 25 yard line. Fast first period, outside Davis. He got it. Took a big lick, but he got the first down. They were very lucky on that play too, Dave, because the, the 25 second clock was just about out. Henry Burst, they took a little bit of extra time in the huddle getting the play called. Wanted to make sure they had the right play called on fourth and one. Henry Burst was lucky that he got that play off before the clock expired. So first down for the outs. Henry Burris, the quarterback, went 15 for 30 last week against West Virginia with one interception, 169 yards, and a touchdown. You can expect Temple to run here. They've had four first down plays, run it four times, and average seven yards each time. Here's Davis up the middle. Got a good push from Summerday again. He's inside the 20 yard line. <laughs> Danny Davis had an uncle that played here, was a pretty fair running back on his own right. Leon Brown played here between 1989 and 91. Danny following in those footsteps and looks to have a bright future ahead of him. Leon Brown, pretty pretty good ball, ball player here at Tempo. I want to tell our stations along the line that we are taking the network commercial position number four. We'll get back to the vet. Panthers against the Owls, end of one. We'll be back shortly. With the tackle. Nicely done. That'll bring up a third down and one. John McCray is a young guy, a sophomore out of Akron, Ohio, that's really starting to pick up his game. 13 tackles last week in the loss to Boston College. Had a career-high 15 tackles in the game that we did against West Virginia. He's a guy, another guy, that, that Johnny Majors and his staff has to be very high on. A guy who's getting better and better in a very difficult season. Tim Israel to the top of your screen. Mark Baxter to the bottom. Ricky short for the out. The up back gets the call at Sid Morris, and he pushes the pile ahead and picks up the first down. Sidney Morris out of Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, just north of Philadelphia, Sheltham High School, third leading rusher. Rusher 200 yards this season. Well, Temple's getting a good push. A lot of good blocks by their right tackle, John Clark. You can see his man makes the tackle, but not until the ball carrier is four yards down the field. John Clark has had to kind of have the weight on his shoulders because Trey Johnson, their All-American at left tackle, missed three games. This is his first game back after an ankle injury. First and ten balls at the 12 for Temple. Danny Davis stumbles, but keeps driving and gets down to about the six-yard line. Mike Halepin with the tackle, tripped him up. First quarter stats, 
Both teams had the ball for a good amount of time and didn't do a heck of a lot with it. No score after one period. And the turnovers were the big one. Yep, that's the, that's the story of the game so far because both teams have moved the football well. And you saw Pitt kind of shoot themselves in the foot when they got in this position in the first quarter. Let's see what Temple does with a second down situation inside the 10 yard line. Second and five at the seven yard line. 12th play of this drive, which started back at the 30 after a pit fumble on the front. Fake. Ferris got a man there. Moore is on it. Still step in. He does. Touchdown. Touchdown, Temple. The Owls on the board. There is a discussion on the field. Flag back upfield. Offside. Yep. Defense declined. Now that penalty was on the cornerback. The quarterback came up in bump and run coverage and stepped over across the line of scrimmage. But again, they go with the counter trap fake. They've been running the ball well with the tailback. Now they fake to the tailback. And Burris, a nice job getting it right to his back, Sidney Morris. And interestingly enough, Sidney Morris in the last five games has caught 13 passes. Before that, he only had one pass reception. So he's become a very big part of what they're doing offensively here in the last several weeks. Richard Maston on for the extra point. He's been perfect all year. 13 for 13. Street wins. And the Owls have taken a 7-0 lead over the Pitt Panthers in the final game of the 93 season for both clubs. Temple in front. We'll be back after these messages. Cup champion, you need magic in these parts, and the magic of these parts. Under that old black magic, old black magic. Oh. Back here at the vet, fine performance by number 21, Sid Morris, his first receiving touchdown, second TD of the season for Sidney. Well, there's Nick gasparato has got to be happy. When you're running the ball well, it opens up what you can do play action. Now watch the fake that Henry Burst is going to get, and the linebackers for Pitt. Watch 67 McCray. Take one step in with the back, still doesn't know where the football is. By that time, Burris has already pulled it out and found his fullback for the touchdown. Nice play fake by the young quarterback. And with that touchdown pass, that gives him four on the season. That's as many touchdowns as four quarterbacks combined for the Owls last year through in the entire season. Owls have had their difficulty at quarterback since the 1990 season, last season for Matt Baker, when the Owls went seven and four. This is his fourth start, and last week was his best performance of the season, and he's a guy who's got a lot of charisma. I think a guy who's got some poise and some leadership ability, and uh, all he can do right now is get better. And, and for them to get on the scoreboard first, and this the final game of the year is a big plus for him. Indeed, the kick by Maston, a good one, sends Jones out of the end zone. So Richard Maston, the wind must be blowing in that direction because at the top of the stadium, the Wind is blowing left to right. 12 plays, 70 yards. That coming after the Jay Jones fumble punt set up the Owls and drove it right downfield. When you're 0 and 10 and you average getting beat 49 to, to, to 10 points per game, uh, it's not very often that you get on the scoreboard first. So that's got to be a huge boost confidence-wise for this Temple football team. Owls going for their first win against a Division I opponent at home in more than two years. It takes over at its 20. Ryan gives it to number 20, and that's Billy West. You now the other kind of ugly losing streak that the the Owls are trying to break. Not only have they not won here at home and won against a Division I team, but they also are 0 for the Big East. They have not won a game in Big East play in the three years that the conference has been in existence. They're 0 and 17, so 
sooner or later, they want to get that monkey off their back. Amen to that. Second down and six for Pitt. Billy West gets the call, a big hole, first down. He gets up close to the 40-yard line, and Robert McWilliams finally brings him down. Number 22, a 15-yard gain. Well, they just ripped a great hole right up through the middle of the defense here. They get a nice block from Lawson Malika. The fullback gets a good block, and Billy West showing any kind of a burst coming off the bench, giving Curtis Martin a little bit of a breather. Billy West normally has been used in the goal line in short yardage. That's where he's been most effective. He's got five rushing touchdowns on the year. That kind of shows it out in the open field. Balls at the 39-yard line. 7-0 Temple, 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. West draws the crowd, picks up a couple. Lance John Snow, John Swift, Tim Terry all there, the linebacking for Temple. Another action around college football. Tech in Virginia tied up at 3-3. Big traditional battle down in South Carolina. Always an important game in the Big Ten. Michigan leads there. Got a packed house in Ann Arbor. About a buck three in there. That's it. Give it to the up back. Number 40, Chad Dukes. Didn't have a lot of room. Looks up two. All extras going on down the field. Tim Terry, number 36. Attack. Pitt coming into today's game at two and eight, one and five in the Big East. Temple one and nine. Overall, 0 and 6 in the Big East. The only win against Eastern Michigan in the opener of the 93 campaign. Made the mistake of saying Temple was 0 and 10 and meant they were 0 and 6 in the Big East and not won the game in the Big East. That big win against Eastern Michigan. Downhill since then. He's Ryan. The throw and complete to Bill Davis, but it will be short of a first down, about a yard short. And again, we see a guy not going far enough to get that yardage on the first down. Corey Green prevents uh, Davis from getting further downfield. You have to know where those first down markers are. That's all it comes down to is when you're trying to convert third downs, when you're trying to move the change, you have to know what you need on the pass route. If you need nine, you can't break the route off at seven, and that time Davis comes up about a half a yard short. Hard and fast rule should be go go to two, two over where you have to go and then come back. Well, you always two have to three. come back to the football anyway, sure. so you've got to go beyond the marker. Power eye set for Pittsburgh on a fourth and one. Martin is going to be real close. Kyle Glasper, number four, the senior quarterback, changing shirts. In his official mode. <laughs> Action right at midfield in front of the pit bench. Well, Temple has not gotten much penetration for the defensive line against the running game of Pitt, but this time as they did, they got great penetration. Adrian Drones and company say they didn't get it, but they're going to make it official and bring out the sticks to measure. Watch the penetration they get. Robert McWilliams coming off the outside, but good penetration at the point of attack. Never allows Martin to really get into the hole. They get his legs out from under him early, and this is going to be a very close call. Wow, that is close. We're talking. Oh! We're talking. He missed it by a half an inch or less. Temple takes over. And again, when you're a defensive football team that gives up an average of 287 yards a game rushing, those plays are few and far between. A great, great play for the Temple defense. Ball will be at the pit 48 when we get back to the vet. 7-0 Temple with 9.54 to go in the first half. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Some people are naturally faster than others. In fact, everything they do is fast. Fast, 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 fast. Now, not everyone appreciates that. But if you're looking to get a new GM car or truck financed, fast is exactly what you want. Mac will take care of your financing. And the folks who arrange GMAC financing and leasing are faster than just about anyone else. GMAC, the expressway home. You forgot your sunglasses. HTS College Basketball. Go for it all. We got it all. HTS 
ESPN College Basketball. Go for it all, because we got it all. Duke tips off the season against the Australian national team. Wednesday night at 7.30, only on HTS. Hi, I'm Susan O'Malley. And I'm Wes Unsell. We're teaming up with HTS, John, and the Olive Garden to help fight hunger. On Tuesday, November 23rd, we're collecting food on behalf of the Capital Area Community Food Bank. Bring a canned food item to the U.S. Air Arena before the bullets face the Charlotte Hornets. If you donate at least one food item, you'll receive a coupon good for a future bullets game. Hunger is a year-round battle, but your contribution will bring a little cheer to this holiday season. Pretty happy on the tip of sideline after stopping this play by Pittsburgh and their ace left tackle Reuben Brown didn't make it happen this time. Well, they tried to run over Reuben, but T. Lang Lloyd, the freshman defensive end, does a great job standing up Brown in the hole. That creates some penetration. That allows the defense to get to the legs of Curtis Martin. And again, we see a critical fourth down in one play. We saw him trying to, to win the ball game against Syracuse several weeks back. Same play, same design. Couldn't get it done. Spread formation for the Al. They take over Pitt territory at the 48. First will throw. Sideline completes it to Tim Israel. He's down to the 42 yard line. Picks up six. Denor's mostly covering. Is this a series with the wind at your back that you let Burris maybe throw it a few times? And continue to build on his confidence well i think he, i think the play right there the little quick throw get an easy completion those are just confidence builders with the win yeah maybe open it up a little bit but don't get away from what you've been doing because the running game has been great for temple so far especially since danny davis came in like in three he stumbles gets it to davis davis makes something out of the play picks up a first down that was so dangerous oh, too, David. <laughs> Normally, you tell the quarterback he got stepped on here and he was going down and he's going to just flip the ball back to Davis. Now, Davis is expecting a handoff. He's going to get a pitch out. Normally, you tell the quarterback, don't try to make this play. They are so lucky that they didn't bobble that one. Give uh, kudos to Danny Davis for finding the football. Absolutely. The ball's at the 37-yard line. Alex took over after holding Pitt. About a half inch short, a fourth down opportunity. The delay to Davis. Hole opens up, runs over Doug Whaley, down to about the 30 yard line. Whaley really was punished on that play. Seven yards on that carry, 52 yards on the afternoon, and 10 carries for Danny Davis, who took over for the starter, Raphael Mack. That's about the fourth time they've gone with the delay draw. Now Henry Burris shows pass. They get the secondary to kind of drop out of there. They do a nice job with their left offensive tackle, Trey Johnson, showing pass, get the rush upfield, and then move on to a linebacker to open that play up. Burris throwing three for four with a touchdown. Got a man open. He didn't turn around. Should have been picked off. Ramondo Davidson was not looking at the 10-yard line. Coverage by Kenyon Robinson. If Davidson looks for the ball, he could have slowed up and maybe made the play. Henry Burris is going to try to throw this as almost a timing route. He's going to throw the post pattern, and Davidson never knows where the football. He never looks for the ball until the ball is way behind him and late. Obviously, a little bit of a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver there. That ball should not have been thrown where it was thrown. Jim Williams, number 19 for Pitt. I'll tell you, I should have made the pick. Third and three at the 30. Temple leads 7-0 here in the second quarter. 8.04 to go. Go, go, Ferris and a misread there as Baxter was taking it down the sideline, covered by DeNorse mostly, and Ferris is looking for the out. But whenever you have a three-step drop, the quarterback and the receiver have to read the coverage the same way. Whenever there's press coverage or bump and run coverage, you're expecting the receiver to turn that into a takeoff, a fade route. The receiver thought he had bump and run coverage. The quarterback did not. Timeout on the field, 7-0 Temple with eight minutes to go in the second period. We'll be back after these messages. Oh, that magic has me. Thank you. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Football Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or any other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference is prohibited. 
They're going to go for a 47-yard field goal. The wind will be at the back of Richard Maston. He is hit from 47 earlier this year. Pretty good effort. Real good effort. It's a three-pointer, and it's 10 nothing Temple. Kudos, as you say, Todd, to Larry Walvick because he did a super job on the hole. Yeah, he did. He had to scoop that one off the turf. And I guess if you can make that kind of field goal, you can wear your hair any way you want. <laughs> Richard Mass is the one with the samurai cut. As long as he makes field goals, that's okay. Richard Maston now three for seven on field goals, and Temple leads by ten. We're back to the vet after these messages. Temple Owls, but the hero of the play has got to be the holder. Well, Larry Walding's a backup tight end, so you know he has pretty good hands. But watch the, 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 the snap's going to be a little bit low into the outside. He traps it against his leg, and the great thing is he gets it down, and he doesn't break the rhythm or the timing of the kicker. Maston is still able to take his normal steps, come through the ball, get all of his leg into it. That's a great, great hold by Larry Walding. Interestingly enough, watching Maston kicking in that direction of warm-ups, he was short while on the other hash mark, the uh, pit kicker, Steve Kalmanides, was just crushing the ball through from about 47 to 50 yards away. See the effects of the wind here at Vet Stadium. Big weekend football tomorrow, the Eagles Giants. Big crowd here at the Vet South Coast. George Young, the Giants general manager, down here early. Richard Maston, three for seven now on field goals. Let's see if he can, oh, he's going to need somebody to, to hold it now. I think they normally give you two chances. Uh, and the third, if it, if it blows off twice, then they got to bring an end guy off the line to come in and hold it, almost like an extra point. So now number three will come in and hold the football, and he will become the safety on this kickoff coverage team. Eugene Colbert, seven plays, 19 yards. That after Temple held hit on a fourth and inches at midfield. So Eugene gets a good break on the deal. When he was the end man, he would be the first guy down to break the wedge. Now he gets to be the safety. <laughs> That's it. Jones at the four. 20, 25. Stays on his feet. Finally brought down by number 49, Corey Green. Good return by Jay Jones. 28-yard return for Jay, trying to make amends for a fumble earlier that set up the first Temple touchdown early in the second quarter. Best starting spot for the Panthers. They'll put it in play at the 31-yard line. Let's call it the 32-yard line. Curtis Anderson split to the bottom of your screen. Dukes in West, ball knocked down, up in the air, Ryan, and they'll let it go. Super play by Lance Johnstone. Lance Johnstone reading that play, just batted that baby way up in the air. Well, the thing that makes Lance Johnstone so special is not just his athletic abilities and his skills, but he's so active. He, he continually stays active. Now, he's great. Look, right there, all that is his instincts. He knows he's not going to get a sack. He's not going to get to the quarterback, but he times his jump, and he's very instinctive. John Ryan trying to get a little bit of something going, a little quick three-step drop. But the play was foiled by Lance Johnstone. And Ryan, again, big Ryan, play. Ryan had been six for six. Ramming some movement down. Now left side of the offensive line for Pitt. 
They'll take a walk. Good ball. Full start. Offense. Florida, which has a big one coming up against Florida State, tuning up against Vanderbilt. Big East against the ACC in that one. And penalty against Lawson Malik at the center. Be second down and 15 balls at the 27 yard line. Temple leads to 10 0. 740 to go here in the first half. Billy West tries to get outside. He's Knocked down after Gino one. John Swift, number 51. First one to get him and you feel the uh, momentum start to pick yep. up now for Temple. You can well, hear him chattering on the sideline and on the field. Certainly can. And I'll tell you where it shows up as much as anything is with your defensive guys, how they fly around to the football and how if they get blocked or if they get knocked down, how quickly they pop back off the ground and get to the football. And right now you're seeing it from this Temple defense. John Swift getting everybody fired up. John's out of uh, Mannheim, Pennsylvania, number 51. It'll be a third and 14. Ryan's got a man over the middle. West drops the ball. Incomplete, and Temple's held one more time. And it's Johnstone covering. That's a pretty good assignment for Johnstone covering the Swift tailback out of the backfield. Well, they had Johnstone up on the end of the line. They were faking the blitz like they had been coming with before. John Ryan has to go downfield with it, and Johnstone is going to get recovered just enough to kind of get his hand on the arm of Billy West. It doesn't allow him to make the catch. Good hustle play by Lance Johnstone. He came from the end of the line in coverage there. First punt of the afternoon for Nate Cochran, who's averaging almost 44 yards per kick. Handled the snap. Taylor sending Mark Baxter way back to the 20 yard line. Mark does a good job to get it up to the 27. Penalty flags all over the place. 50 yard punt, 7 yard return. <laughs> Give credit to Kevin Leon for that illegal play. block in the back, above the waist, on the return. A 10-yard penalty. First down. Now that's a penalty, Pat. How many times? Do you have a count of how many times we've seen that in our 10 games this year? At least twice a game, I think. If that would be a safe estimate. Again, I, and I really believe the reason there's so many penalties on the kicking game is because that's an aspect of practice that you very seldom do full speed live with your own people. And so when you actually get into a game, it, it, it's become warp speed almost for the players and you get a lot of careless penalties. We're at the vet in Philadelphia. Dave Sims and Todd Blackledge with you in our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Temple leading 10-0. Sue Morse with a TD catch and Richard Masson with the 47-yard field goal. The points for Temple. Taking over first and 10 now at the 13. They're going with the wind. Danny Davis not going anywhere thanks to Gerald Simpson, number 45. Temple's had some good success running the football. Again, they're going behind their right side, their big right tackle, John Clark, number 74, but good penetration across the line of scrimmage that time by Gerald Simpson. Simpson's a guy that, that Chuck Driesbeck, defensive coordinator, thinks is a big-time player. Simpson's been bothered by a knee injury for most of this season, has not had the opportunity to play in too many ball games. Ball blew up field a yard. They had to, that's why they were blowing the whistles to move it back. Pitt with eight men in the box. Second down and nine at the 14. Play action for Burris. Got time. Got a man. Overthrows Ramondo Davidson. He had Mark Baxter on a fly down the left sideline. Maurice Williams, number 17, covering for Pitt. Well, Ramondo Davison saw the cornerback Maurice Williams was peeling off on this coverage and if, and if he would have kept running the pattern to the outside where Burris wanted him to go, he would have got clocked by Maurice Williams and he tried to gear down the pattern but Burris wasn't able to see that coverage change. The Temple, near its own goal line, 0 for 4 on third down situations thus far. 5.44 to go here in the first half, 10-0 out. Burris with time. 
double clutch that Jeff Frederick got there. Ball hit and broken up by number 11, Denorse Mosley. Good play by Denorse, who's out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Yeah, the receiver was Raimondo Davidson. And the best defensive series that time by the Pitt Panthers. They go straight drop back. Now, Burris is a little bit late with this throw, and that's kind of costly going on the sideline, and Denorse Mosley comes off of his man, gets a hand on the football, but right that time, Frederick was very well covered. Pitt will get some good field possession here, position here. Second punt by John Shea, standing at his one. Not a good kick. Ball goes out of bounds at midfield. Not a good punt by John Shea. 36 yards it covers, and Pittsburgh's going to be in pretty good shape here, down 10-0. Coming up here, from the vet at halftime. We'll take a look back at what happened in the Big East last week. We'll have our interview with Big East Commissioner Mike Trangisi and our first half stats and highlights coming your way at halftime. That starting spot for the Panthers. They're down 10 nothing. This is where John Ryan really needs to assert himself now. The offense has been somewhat sluggish. He needs to come up and make a few plays. Martin will make a play. Picks up about nine. Down to the 41 yard line. Penalty flag in the secondary. We'll see what that's all about. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. Automatic first down. I think they got Kyle Glasper on that penalty, the senior cornerback, because what's happening is the pit wide receivers are doing a great job blocking downfield and they're cutting the defensive backs from Temple. They're, they're really staying after it on every play, every running play. The wide receivers of Pitt are flying at the legs of the defensive backs for Temple. And I think one of the defensive backs there, I think it was Kyle Gla Glasper, got a little bit upset at the end of that play, came up with a personal foul. So just that quickly, Pitt has gone from its 50 from the 50 yard line to the Temple 27. Curtis Martin with the call. Picked it outside, but not for long. Good play. Dragged down from behind by Joe Wenzel. Two yard pickup. He's now 11 carries for Curtis Martin. 11 carries, 28 yards. It's a fine play by Joe Wenzel. Joe Wenzel was a starter earlier in the year, playing in a backup role now. Comes right inside the left guard, Tim Glass, and then chases it down from inside out. Good pursuit on the backside by Joe Wentzel. And Curtis Martin had a little bit of room out there had he eluded that tackle. Anderson and Davis split wide to the right. They'll swing it out to Martin. Good hold, big room. First down and ridden out of bounds by Tony Angelo inside the 10-yard line at about the 8-yard line. Johnstone uh, got in there quickly but could not really uh, make too much of a play for Temple. And again, I don't understand how you don't account for Curtis Martin because he is the offense for Pitt. They come with the blitz. That's fine. You make them throw quick, but then you know they're going to throw it to Curtis Martin. And what Temple's trying to do, they're rushing a linebacker and they're taking their defensive end, who's James Spears, and trying to have him run out and cover the tailback. Not going to do that very often. Six catches, 65 yards from Martin. First in goal, he gets the call again. He fights and fights and finally a uh, hard tail out of there by John Swift, number 51. Tony Angelo involved also. I think we're going to get another personal foul at the end of this play. Just a little foul. extra effort. Defense. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. Indeed was it. I think it was the hogtail effort by uh, number 51, John Swift. Yeah, they had him down. They had the play very well defense. It was very minimal yardage, but here at the end, John Swift is going to just do a little bit too much. Oof. Now, actually, I don't think it was John Swift as much as it was the guy coming on top of him. As Martin was going down, somebody kind of ended up on the pile at the end. And again, some careless penalties by Temple now has really put them in a hole here. Owls lead it 10 nothing, but Pittsburgh knocking on that door. First and goal at the five. Temple got on the board second quarter early. Sid Morris a pass from Burris. And then Richard Mask in a 47-yard field goal. Pitt's going to have to call a timeout. Sure enough, play clock was down to five seconds. Boy, how do you account for that? Your first and goal at the five. It's 
Why does it take so long to get the playoff? Well, I think part of the confusion, when you get right inside the, around the five-yard line, you don't know whether you want to go with your, your heavy personnel where you want to bring in extra tight ends and go with a power set, a goal line type offense, or whether you want to keep your regular personnel in. It's kind of that in-between part of the field. And John Ryan was obviously not sure what they wanted from the sideline and made a smart decision in calling timeout. Don't get up there and call a bad play when you're on the five-yard line. Temple Isles lead it 10 nothing here at Vent Stadium, and you can almost bet that Curtis Martin's going to get the call one way or the other. Frank Beamer's Hokies scored a touchdown to go up by seven. Other action around college football. Well, Maurice DeShazo continues to have a dream season for Virginia Tech, and uh, he's somebody that. Frank Beamer will definitely love to have back next year. Somebody he can really build around. He's an exciting quarterback in this league. Dukes, Washington, and Martin Power Eye set for Pittsburgh. First and goal at the five. Dukes in motion. Martin, yep, he gets the call. Left side, cuts back. He's close. And they stop him at about the one-yard line. Lance Johnstone gets him up high and corkscrews him back. Nice little call on the goal line, too. They put Dukes in motion to the one side. Normally, when you put a guy in motion, you run behind him. You use him as a lead blocker, but they used him as a decoy. Put Dukes in motion to the right and pitched it to the left to Curtis Martin, led with Billy West, and almost got it in the end zone. Real close. You see Johnstone getting him up high, and a chokehold. A chokehold may have earned it. Good ball. Personal foul. Defense. Automatic first down. You gotta believe it was a chokehold that did it. And Ron Dickerson has reason to be angry as we've seen his ball club give up several personal fouls, three personal fouls in this series alone. First and goal at the one. Martin up high. He elevated, but did he cross? He did not. That was a strange jump. He jumped almost straight up in the air. Yeah. He never got his body flattened out, never got the ball near the plane of the end zone. He had good vertical, but he didn't have any extension on it. That's right. John Swift met him. Number 51. Take a look at this. Now watch. Curtis Martin's going to get good spring right here, but he goes straight up in the air, and John Swift just kind of takes him and turns his body even more upright. He doesn't get the ball over the plane. Good play by John Swift. <laughs> Inches, probably centimeters away from the goal line. They go at the wishbone set. Billy West. He jumps. He scores. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Corey Green hit him, but it didn't stop the play. Touchdown, Panthers. Yeah, Temple's upset, but Billy West was clearly in the end zone. He actually went in, got hit, and bounced back out of the end zone, so it looked like he didn't score, but he was able to get the ball across the plane. And Say what Pitt has as much as anything they can thank Temple for the personal foul penalties on this drive. Watch. They get a good block at the point of attack. Now right there, the ball's across, and then he bounces back out of the end zone. And Temple thought they had him stopped. Pittsburgh calls a timeout. He had a 36-yard punt that set up Pitt in good field position at the 50, and then three personal fouls. Puts Pittsburgh in good shape, and they go in and punch it in. Seven-play 50-yard drive. Think about a two-pointer at this stage here, uh, Todd? Well, I think it, it, it might be a good thing to do right here. You're down 10 to 6. You go for two, then chances are you can take the lead with a field goal. I don't think you need to at this point. It's still early in the ball game. Make it 10 to 7. Uh, there's still a lot of football to be played, but it looks like that's what they're discussing, uh, that they might be better off cutting this lead to two right now. I personally would, would kick the extra point right now and just take the lead at, or take the, the score to be 10 to 7. Kalmanides is in on the field. James Spears and having a discussion with the referee. And talking about the line of scrimmage. And things getting a little heated down there. All the scoring here in the second period at the vet. Look at the flag up near the Michael Liberty Bell at the northeast end of the stadium. That wind is really in charge here. And indeed, let's see, they will go. They will line up. 
before the kick. Let's see if they execute it. Kalmanides. It's on for the Panthers. John Ryan will hold. Lou Casanova is the snap. Glasper made a good effort to try to block it. The kick is good. Kalmanides. Remains perfect on the season. He's now 17 for 17, and we've got a 10-7 ball game. And the frustrating thing for Ron Dickerson in that drive is, is the personal foul penalties because, you know, you're, you're having trouble enough stopping teams this year. But, but what that speaks of is that speaks of a lack of discipline. And I know Ron Dickerson doesn't like that. Ron Dickerson is a very disciplined coach and is demanding that out of his team. But, but when your team makes those kind of dumb penalties, just trying to be overly aggressive, uh, it doesn't speak well for your program in general. Or trying to out macho somebody. I, I, that's the, one of the great things about football. It's such a, if you will, macho sport. If you yeah. want to prove your manhood out there and you want to drill somebody, you got ample opportunity. Why hit a guy after right. the play? The officials are looking at it. It's an easy call for the guy. It's a proverbial no-brainer. Right. Do it between the whistles. And uh, you, you're right. You have plenty of opportunity to do it when it counts. Texters. Boy, you know back in Blacksburg, they're whooping it up. That is a humongous rivalry. Florida big. Ohio State's Rose Bowl hopes starting to fade a little bit, sort of like that uh, final scene of Citizen Kane, right? Sort of fading to dust about to blow away. They'll be flying the flags at half mass back in my hometown when I get back if that, ho if that score stands up. Evan Leon getting ready to kick off. Jeff Frederick and Eugene Colbert are deep. Frederick number one, Colbert number three. 10-7, Temple, 2.23 to go here in the first half. A liner, Frederick at the 20. Almost run down, if he can get to the corner, he's got some room, he does, and runs out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Wasn't much of a wall there, but he did a nice job to get outside. Kevin Leon with the, punt, with the uh, kickoff, on, dribbled it down. Here's Jeff Frederick. 301 off the clock for the Panthers. 36 yard punt and three personal fouls on Temple. The story of that drive. I mean, obviously, in this ball game, because both schools are in Pennsylvania, you have kids that are from each other's areas and maybe played against each other in high school. Another interesting connection, Kurt Signetti, who's the recruiting coordinator for Pittsburgh, he was the quarterback coach here at Temple for the last three years under Jerry Byrne. That's 214. Here's Barris. He's going to throw, and he has time. Dump it over the middle. Danny Davis. Big yard. First down up near midfield to about the 48-yard line. 18-yard pickup. Danny Davis having a fine afternoon. Gerald Simpson pre prevents further damage for Pittsburgh. Well, they're doing some nice things with Burris. They're giving him some of the simple throws just to get his confidence up. Zone defense by Pitt. Burris does a nice job waiting for the secondary to drop out of there. And that's just a little predetermined design dump off to the fullback. Get the linebackers to run out of there and then slip your back out on a delay route. Injured player on the field is Maurice Williams, number 17. Oh, yeah. Left leg injury. Maurice out of Ambridge, Pennsylvania. A, junior, a senior, 5'11", 170. Now, see, this is the quarterback in me speaking, but if Maurice Williams goes down and he's the starting corner, whoever they bring in, I go deep on him right away. Here's Maurice Williams. The end of this play, you can see his right leg is going to get caught ooh, under there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can't even look. No, nope, that doesn't look good. He's walking off, though. I'll tell you what, that's a great sign that he's walking off. Can you say Joe Theismann? That's what I was starting to think on that one. Maurice is walking off under his own power, so that's uh, certainly the best news of the moment. That was ugly. Al's trying to make something happen here in the final minute 57. Derek Parker has replaced him. He's down at the bottom of the screen, the new corner in the ball game. See if they go after him. Tim Israel is the man. But this Burns is under big time pressure. He gets rid of it. Jeff Frederick is there. Oh, he had it at the 34-yard line and dropped it. Tom Bart with terrific pressure. Tom Bart doing a good job to run Burris, make him run for his life. Well, Tom Bart's going to get instant pressure right away. He's going to come on the inside, gets by the block of Glenn Tinner, the guard, and he has his hands on him for about five yards. He had his hands on him there once. He's going to get his hands on him again here right at the end. 
And Burris does a nice job to ev ev elude that rush and at least try to make a throw down the field. Temperatures brisk here at the vet with a heavy wind at about 28 miles per hour. Temple going with the wind right now. Setting up the screen. Davis is there, so are the blockers. Penalty flag down. And Davis will come up short of the first down. Had to get to the 42. Actually, he'll be close, but we'll see what the penalty is. I think it's going to be a holding penalty on Trey Johnson, the left tackle. Holding offense. 10-yard penalty from the squad of the foul. Those are drive killers and antacid. Who's got them? Who's got the pills? <laughs> Most coaches, man. Situation like this, you see drives stopped, slowed by mistakes of that nature. Make you crazy. One, what's frustrating, too, is you get a nice couple plays early in the drive, and then that kind of gets you enthused to, hey, we can probably score here before half, but now they kind of have shot themselves in the foot again. There's a look at Trey, right for his master's degree. We can see they're setting up the screen. They let the inside rush come in, but there's Trey Johnson with a little takedown on the outside against Mike Mooring, and that's, the officials were right on that. In fact, when they threw the penalty flag, it actually, I think, landed in Trey's lap as he was laying there on the ground. So it was pretty obvious who the call was on. Second down and 27. Minute 28 to go here in the first half. 10-7. Temple over Pitt. There's the lane to Davis. It's a block. Number 67, John McCray makes the tackle. Right now what Ron Dickerson wants is for his team to not do anything dumb. I mean, it's probably been a long time since the Temple team has gone into the half ahead in a ball game. But right now they're ahead. 10 to 7. He doesn't want to do anything dumb. Turn the ball back over and give Pitt a chance to score here before halftime. His kicker, Mastin, already has a 47-yard field goal on the afternoon. He's kicking with the wind, so the next few seconds, worst comes to worst, if they can pick up another 30 yards to we'll put him in shape to uh, make another kick at him. First and throw. They run a game on the offensive line, defensive line, and that screen is broken up nicely. Out. Standing play by John McCray, no gain. Boy, he saw that coming. It really took a while to, de to develop that. Yeah, that was an excellent play by John McCray. He read the screen, and, and Temple had linemen out there in front, but John McCray made such an aggressive move to the football that the linemen out in front of the screen never had a chance to block him. Watch. McCray reads screen. He beats the linemen to the spot. Because he read the play, his speed and quickness got him to the spot before the linemen were able to set up for Temple. Great play in the open field by John McCray. The cheerleaders. Heading for cover as halftime approaches here at Vet Stadium. 23 seconds to go. John Shea will punt with Jay Jones deep for Pittsburgh. And Jay will look to make a big play here. Third punt on the afternoon for John Shea. I'll tell you, those cheerleaders aren't dummies either. Had the sweatpants and sweatshirts <laughs> on too. Yeah, that right. they, they weren't out there in the shorts and t-shirts. Shea will be punting with the wind. Uh-oh. This play did not work, and Pitt's going to be in great shape at the 25-yard line with 17 seconds to go. A loss of 13. Derek Parker makes the stop. Well, this, this is caused by a bad snap right into your living room. The ball, look at it, take off to the right. John Shea tries to get to it. Gets one hand on it and then does all that he can at that point. And really, you can't fault the punter, John Shea, for that. It was a horrendous snap coming back there from Glenn Tinner. The ball really got away from him, just kept sailing to the outside. Temple in danger right now. It's a 10-7 ball game, 17 seconds to go. And Pitt got a great opportunity at the Temple 26. Davis and Anderson to the bottom of your screen. Ryan to throw and he's got time. Got a man in the end zone. Anderson down at the five to the three-yard line. He ran a post pattern, had to slow up. He was about to go in the end zone. Nine seconds to go. 23-yard pickup. No times out remaining. Nine seconds to go. 
And they, the clock won't start until they get the chain set, so John Ryan can actually kill the clock, which he does. Nice play. Smart play by John Ryan. You know, that's the one good thing in college football is that when you get a first down, the clock won't start until you, the, the chains are set. We go back a play before, John Ryan actually doesn't put much mustard on this ball. He's going to kind of float it into the middle. You see, he threw it off balance. He was kind of up on one foot, and the ball is hanging in the air, but there's no coverage coming from the other side. Kyle Glasper couldn't get around to make the play, and Curtis Anderson comes up with the big catch. Hit fans to tell you that should have been six. Saw that rush by Scott Holland, number 93, and threw it off the back foot. Here was six seconds now. If you run a quick developing play, you could get two plays off here before the half. There it is. Clock down to three. He's in trouble. Ball tip. Ball tip. And that'll do it for the half. What a break for Temple. And you talk about disappointment for the Pitt Panthers. They didn't get the quick look in the end zone, nor did they go for the field goal. So it's 10-7 at the half and we have an injured player back at the 20 yard line. What a wild and crazy way to end the first half. Well, we talked about how they needed to try to get something quick and you can see it didn't open up right away and John Ryan pulls the ball back off the line of scrimmage and at this point now he has time for only this last play and the ball gets tipped, doesn't get anything on the football and really an excellent play by the defense in there, T. Lang Lloyd, number 96, I think the guy who got his hands up on the play. I think it might be Reuben Brown, number 78, who's the injured player. It is Reuben Brown. That certainly is a good news for Pittsburgh. Ron Dickerson, Dave Sims, and Todd Blackledge upstairs. That uh, last drive by Pittsburgh where they got the Billy West touchdown, a 36-yard punt, and the three personal fouls really hurt you. Oh, it's unbelievable. That indicative of what the season was like, uh, Dave. And, and uh, it's one thing we tried to encourage our kids not to do is to have those kind of mistakes. And, and that's exactly what happens is, uh, is that the team gets them fired up and they start marching down the field and, and they start scoring points. Thank God we stopped them right there, which is a little fire for our guys going in at halftime. It's got to be a long time, Ron, since your team's gone in ahead at halftime. A big stop by your defense there at the very end. It was, and it was important that we do that. And I think our guys are, they're mentally motivated and they're fired up to play. They just, uh, if we can eliminate the crazy dumb mistakes, and I'm going in at halftime, I want to get on a few guys and tell them to, to grow up and, and uh, play right. One other thing, uh, Danny Davis having a big first half. Is there an injury with Raphael Mack or are you just going with Davis at this point? Hey, Danny's playing hard. We're going to let him continue to play. And, and, uh, and uh, as, hot, as hot as he is, we're going to just let him go. Ron, thank you. Good luck, second half. Thank you. 10-7, Temple leading at halftime against Pittsburgh. We'll be back to Vet Stadium in Philadelphia with our halftime activities. We'll do that after these words from our local state right. Not an easy task for the Badgers either. You know, and everybody's talking about the, uh, the possible rematch of Notre Dame and Florida State. Florida State's going to have their hands full going into Gainesville to play Florida at home. Uh, the Gators have not lost at home since Steve Spurrier took over that program. So uh, there, that... that January 1st matchup or rematch is no lock. Second half underway here at Philadelphia. Jay Jones takes it at the 23-yard line. And James Spears brings him down along with Evans Charles, number 39. And Pitt will have pretty good field position to start the third quarter. John Ryan, boy, he would love to have that final play of the first half back again. Ryan thrown for more yardage. But Burris has the TD. Ball's at the 38-yard line. Curtis Martin gets things underway and going nowhere. Loses a couple. Scott Holland, big play for Temple. Scott was looking for that play. And this is the kind of momentum builder that the Owls need. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it's going to be very important to see how these teams play the first five minutes of the second half. Who stops the run the best? That's going to be the key in the ballgame. Scott Holland, great penetration across the line of scrimmage, wraps up Curtis Martin. A good start for Temple. Curtis Martin only averaging 1.9 yards per carry. Completion of Bill Davis. 
Not much of a pickup there. Number 49, Corey Green is on top of Davis. Bring up a third, third and long for Pitt. Do anything to keep warm on the sideline. One more down, D. One more. Down. Number 81 is Kyle Benzio, the injured tight end for the out. Ball knocked up in the air. It's caught by Duke. He's got nowhere to go. All the way back to the 32-yard line. Joe Wenzel with the knockdown. Good play by Joe. Joe Wenzel, a senior out of Elmer, New Jersey. Lost nine on that play. You know, John Hendricks is the defensive line coach for Temple, and I think this is something that you coach into your players. We've seen Temple, the couple times we've covered him, knock a lot of passes down at the line of scrimmage. When you know you're not going to get to the quarterback, but you see that he's getting ready to throw, stop and go straight up in the air with your arms. That time, Wenzel comes up with a big deflection. Joe Wenzel, big fella, 6'3". Kevin Leon, the punt, with the win. Didn't get much of a bang out of that one. Mark Baxter, penalty flag on the play, and Mark Green, the 25-yard line, but he at least prevented the ball from going inside the 20. 44-yard punt for Kevin, two-yard return. I'm gonna walk this one back. Illegal participation on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Wow. Oh, boy. Illegal participation means that they had 12 guys on the field. And, uh, boy, you talk about it. And they ran the play with 12. That gives Pitt an automatic first down. That's amazing. Johnny Majors benefits there. Pitt gets the ball right back. Well, that could turn out to be a big development should... Ron Dickerson's defense not holding. Ron doing his best to hold himself in. They've had some breakdowns of the mental kind that have really uh, hurt them this afternoon. Well, the Panthers will have the ball at the after this first down, after this uh, penalty, in good shape. Stand correct. Get him, go! So that leaves them short. So I thought that was an automatic first down. Yeah. So that 15-yard penalty leaves them a yard short. So Kevin Leon is on the punt again. Tony Angelo deep for Temple. Leon gets a high hanger this time. This has a chance to be down inside, and it is nicely done by Pittsburgh at the five-yard line. A 48-yard punt. And it was down by number 35. At you see McGee going off the field. Outstanding job. 12.47 to go here in the third period. Temple leads it by the score of 10-7. We'll return to the vet after these messages. Started the game and then gave way to Danny Davis. Davis put up some big numbers. Yeah, this is a good run. Again, they go with the delayed draw. They show pass. They let the line come across a little bit. And look, that's just determination by Raphael Mack. And he was on the sideline watching Danny Davis do it for most of the first half, so he's in there trying to make the most of this series an opportunity. Back to the outside, and maybe a yard to the nine. Tom Bart, number 90, makes that first stop. And help from uh, Tom Tumulty. Tom Barn is a guy who has had a very consistent year for this pit defense. I mean, you, you hear of Tom Tumblety who's the leading tackler, but Tom Barn leads the team in sacks with seven. In fact, he's right up there among the leaders in the Big East. He also leads the team with ten quarterback pressures, and he's a guy who, who, who plays with a lot of heart and a lot of enthusiasm, kind of an overachiever, but he's been a great leader for Johnny Majors. Temple takes the tight end out to go with three wideouts. Ferris makes the delay. Pump fake in trouble. And hit at the 10, dragged down at the 11, and fortunate to hold on to the ball. Mike Mooring chased him down, number 98. Good play by Mike Mooring. 
Well, they've had success with this delay draw. Now they try to play action, but good coverage downfield. That forces Burris to try to leave the pocket, and you called it, Dave. Burris, very lucky that he holds on to the football because he did not know Mooring was behind him. He saw what was in front of him with the pit defense, but not what was behind him. Last time Temple punted a bad snap by Glenn Tenner. John Shea, a couple of yards deep in the end zone. Good snap. Pressure and a bad kick. Jones will watch it take a pit bounce. It's down at the 36-yard line. That's a punt of only 25 yards. It was down by Aaron Patterson, number 23. So John Shea is not having a good afternoon. And Pittsburgh in fabulous field position at the 35, and they're down by the score of 10 to 7 with 10.38 to go, third period. We'll return to Vet Stadium after these words from our local stations. Brad Edwards of the Washington Redskins. I know on Sundays everyone's thinking of one thing, football. But on Sunday, you should be thinking about Subway's halftime, half-price sale. For every sub you buy, you get the next one at half price. The hardest part is choosing from all the great subs served on fresh baked bread with free fixings. The subs are ready, Mr. Edwards. Thank you. Gotta go. Now on Sundays till December 19th, buy one sub and get the next at half price at participating subways in the Washington area. And you see the flag is taking one turn around the flagpole. It's how stiff the wind has been this afternoon. The wind is not only a factor on the field, it's also a factor in the booth here because I think it's blowing directly in at this point. Pittsburgh with the ball and heading with the wind at its back. Down by three. Shadows have taken over here. They play fake setting up the screen. Green to the other side. Martin makes the catch with a lot of room to the 30. Cuts back in and bang down inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Play made by Scott Holland and Curtis Martin. He hit his own man. He got hit from behind and picks up 12 yards on that play. His seventh catch of the afternoon. We saw this play a lot with Virginia Tech the last couple weeks. It's a double screen. Look, Ryan's faking the screen to the fullback to the right. Then they come back to the left, and they have linemen going out on both sides. So the defense doesn't get a real good read as to where the screen's going to go. It's a double screen. They come back to the tailback and pick up a nice first down. Ball's at the 24. The delay going to the other side. Martin is strung out nicely. It's a play made by number 49, Corey Green. Corey Green in the backfield in a hurry and read that one and got a piece of mark. Nice play. Corey Green, a nice freshman. He was uh, wearing number 53 as we take a look at Boston College on the scoreboard first out in South Bend, and that's a, a good start for Tom Coughlin's team. But Corey Green was wearing 53. He was a linebacker. They moved him to strong safety. They say, hey, Corey, if you want to play strong safety, you can't wear number 53. That'll look right. Had to change it to 49. Second and 10 at the 24. Ryan. Got a man there. Anderson catches at the four-yard line. And they give it to him. Kyle Glasper trying to wave it off. But that's a first and goal for Pitt. 15-yard gain. Now, I couldn't see this one, Dave, but the sound, what I heard, it sounded like a double thump. Sounded like it hit the ground and then came into his stomach. Let's take a look on this replay. And again, Ryan kind of floats it into the middle to Curtis Anderson. Now, let's watch the end of this. Anderson has the post. They created oh, no. it. He yep. framed it very well. From that angle, it looks like a pretty good catch by Curtis Anderson. First and goal for the Panthers at the four-yard line. They're down 10-7, 9 on two to go here in the third period. Johnstone with a big hit stops Martin from scoring. Martin, though, advances to about the two-yard line. And we talked about Lance Johnstone causing four fumbles this year and being able to create big plays. Part of that is because he explodes through people when he tackles. And you can see it right there. The hit that he makes on Curtis Martin, it's an explosive tackle. Watch this tackle. Johnstone... He doesn't have a, a full head of steam. That's only about two yards away he is from the back, but he's able to explode through. It's great explosion in his legs. Martin is in for the touchdown for Pittsburgh, and the Panthers take a 13-10 lead. He went behind the right side of Lamont Liggett and Matt Bloom for the score. Johnny Majors was happy with the last six minutes of the first half. He's got to be happy with the first seven minutes of the second half. Good blocking on the right side. Jared Miller, the guard. Matt Bloom, the right tackle. And Curtis Martin knows how to find the end zone. Six rushing TD for Curtis. 
Five plays, 35 yards, and that after a 25-yard punt by John Shea of Temple. So the punting game has played big and some scores this afternoon. Here's Calamides the extra point. And it's good. So with 8.23 to go here in the third period at Vets Stadium in South Philadelphia, Pitt Panthers have taken a 14-10 lead over the Temple Owls. We'll return to the Vet with more of Curtis Martin and the Pitt Temple Show after these messages. Wenzel then look at the block he gets on the middle linebacker John Swift. Takes number 51, drives him two or three yards back into the end zone, and that opens up the nice lane for Curtis Martin. That's an excellent block by a young offensive lineman, Jared Miller. There's your scoring drive, 215, and that's set up by the poor punt by John Shea. It only covered 25 yards, and Pitt had great field position. Kevin Leon will kick it off for the Panthers. Jeff Frederick is deep for Temple, along with Eugene Colbert. And they'll have to get somebody to hold the ball there, too, because Wind at the back of the Panthers. Now they'll give him one more try. You get two tries. And after two, then you got to bring somebody in. You saw a momentum shift in the second quarter with, and there it is. So here comes Kenyon Robinson, number 18, to hold it. Saw Temple gain some momentum. Young and budding Panther down there. <laughs> that looks like a pretty warm outfit, though, anyway. <laughs> yeah, all right. Better today than on one of those 90-degree days, I'll tell you that. Tell you what, it'll be nice and cool around 5.30 about <laughs> midway through that Eagle-Giant game tomorrow. <laughs> Frederick at the 11 with the 20. Gets the corner. And the sideline, that's Frederick, run out of bounds at the 42-yard line. A good-looking return. Kevin Leon, the kicker, has to run him out of bounds. And Jeff Frederick, who had a 72-yard kickoff return down to Miami, it was called back because of a hit late. He turns this one 30 yards. There's Larry Walding. Larry was involved, oddly enough, in the play down to Miami with the clip that brought back that tremendous play against the Hurricanes. Owls have good field position at the 41. Johnny Majors wondering why the special teams allowed that big of a return. Jeff Frederick showed some good jets on the sideline there. He's not a very big guy, but once he got to the corner, he made some, made up some ground in a hurry. Burris. Underneath, Davidson catches, hit hard by McCray at the 49. Can you imagine wondering why guys do so much yapping? Both guys made a play, and both guys get up yapping. You know, a guy like Ramondo Davidson is, is really, to me, what college football is all about. I mean, here's a guy who, coming into this year, had only had three career catches. Now he's the leading receiver. That's his 22nd catch on the year. Just a little simple out route. Turns it into a positive game. Good hit on the sideline by John McCray. But Ramondo Davidson is a guy who's a senior that's paid his dues, and he's having a big, big last year here at Temple. All at the 49. Delay, Danny Davis picks up the first down. The tackle made by John McCray, who remains very active this afternoon. John's played well out of Akron, Ohio. And again, Ron Dickerson goes with Raphael Mack, his starting tailback for the opening series of the game and of the half, and then goes right back to Danny Davis, who, you know, you got to go with who has the hot hand, and Danny Davis has the hot hand uh, as far as the tailbacks go right now. Ron Dickerson's club had a lead of 7-0, then 10-0, but the Panthers have come back 14 on at two points. It's 14-10, 7-0-3 to go here in the third period. The up back gets the call, and Sid Morris picks up a couple. John McCray, third straight tackle. Jimmy Williams with the stop, too. Jim Williams, number 19. Pitt Panthers, Temple Owls, a couple of struggling ball clubs. Pitt at 2 and 8. Temple 1 and 9. And Temple in last place in the Big East trying to at least set up a tie. 0 and 6 against Pitt's 1 and 5. 
Second down from the 46. Ferris got time. Throws underneath to Davidson and Ramondo run out of bounds at the pit 41. Picks up about five on that play. A yeah, nice alert play by Kenny Burris. He was looking downfield, didn't have anything, had the presence of mind to just kind of move around the pocket a little bit and dump it off to Davidson. Now they come up instead of third down and nine, they get a little bit of it back. They come up with a third down and about two for the first down. Henry Burris, some pretty good numbers for the freshman from Spyro, Oklahoma. 6'2", 190. Set a career record. 47-yard TD. Spyro, Oklahoma. Alfef, Alfef. Alert, alert. <laughs> McCray with the stop on Sid Morse. The Al going for a ride. And one of our cameras got drilled there, too. How about that? In fact, our cameraman was following him, and he was tripped up, but he picked up six on the play. Been that kind of afternoon here in Philadelphia. <laughs> Good job, our cameraman. Hanging in there, hanging tough. Takes a bow from the Temple Band. First and 10 at the 36 for the out. Looked like Danny Davis was going to have a lot more. Mike Halepin makes the first hit. Slow things down. Get him two. Again, Temple going back to what's been good for him in that last series. You know, they started on the own four-yard line, and it's tough. You want to be conservative. You want to hope that you can just move it out a little bit and get a good punt. They weren't able to come up with a good punt, and, and Pitt was able to take the ball and go right back down the field and take the lead here. But now Temple's better field position, able to mix up the run and pass a little bit better. Davidson in the slot left side. Outside him is Frederick. The delay, Davis, they know that play well. Loss of about two. Gerald Simpson first to arrive on the scene. Lots of help. A lot of people want credit on that one. Good well, play. Doug if, Whaley in there, too. If you continue to do the same thing, eventually the defense is going to figure it out. And this time, Gerald Simpson saw this delay draw that they've run with, with a lot of effectiveness here in the ballgame so far. Simpson closed down in a hurry from his outside linebacker position, made the play behind the line. Powell's going to have to put it up here. Third down and 12 at the 38. 14-10, Pittsburgh leading Temple, 4-20 left, third period. Let's look by Pitt. Here they come, brought outside, well short, and had Tim Israel made the catch, it would have been about five yards short nonetheless. Norris mostly covering for Pitt. And a nice call by Chuck Driesbeck, the defensive coordinator of Pitt. He comes up, he shows blitz right away. He forces them to make the quick throw. And even if that ball's complete, it's not going to be enough for the first down when you need 12 yards. So a good call by the defensive coordinator, Chuck Driesbeck. Temple calls a timeout. And Chuck Driesbeck and Ron Dickerson touch to their respective units here. 4.13 to go from Vet Stadium in Philadelphia. Pittsburgh leading Temple, 14-10. We'll return after these messages. Yeah, how far away do you think I can get in 72 hours? I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. For our 35th birthday, get a minivan for only $35 a day. With unlimited mileage, the smart money is on budget. Playing peanuts or suddenly playing nuts? Introducing new Fisher Favorites Crunchy Baked Peanuts. You get a double crunch. Crunchy peanuts inside and crispy crunch outside. And they're baked, not fried, for a double crunch. There's honey grain and barbecue, too. You get a double crunch. New Fisher Favorites Crunchy Baked Peanuts. It's Fisher Flavor! It's just plain nuts! Cold and windy here in Philly. Pittsburgh leading 14-10 over Temple. And for you Big East fans, here's a flash of good news coming up for you in a couple of seconds on turning out to be a beautiful day here in Philadelphia. Boston College, a 10-0 lead. Glenn Foley hit Ivan Boyd for the touchdown. 
10 nothing at South Bend. You know, and you expect an obvious letdown from Notre Dame just because of the emotional game and the win they had over Florida State a week ago. It's tough to keep that same level. And Boston College, uh, you know, you got a guy like Glenn Foley who's in a groove, and the team has still very fresh in their minds what happened to them when they went out to South Bend last year. I, I knew this was going to be a tougher ball game for Lou Holtz's team. Temple Owls will go for it on a fourth and 12 at the pit 38. The blitz, Burris in trouble. Still in trouble, managed to throw it. Got a man there, Israel's dropped the ball and knocked away a fine defensive play by number 17, Maurice Williams. But Israel was there at the 15 yard line. Maurice Williams out of Ambridge, Pennsylvania. Nice pass break up this season, well done. Well, Henry Burris just did a nice job getting rid of the football because they're going to go play action, and Pitt's coming with an all-out blitz. You see, they disrupt the play fake right away. Then Gerald Simpson is there, almost comes up with the sack, and Burris does a nice job just getting a throw off because that play should have been stopped as far as uh, with no fake and a sack in the backfield because Pitt was really coming after him with the blitz. Hamilton Simpson, Chase Burris. Big play. Pitt takes over. Panthers 38-yard line. Johnstone shows blitz right side. He slows up the play a little bit. Uh-oh, Curtis Martin outside. Big hole, 50, and finally dragged down by Corey Green, number 49. First down, Pittsburgh. That is one of the finest runs that you will ever see, what Curtis Martin did here. Watch from behind the offense. Now, Lance Johnstone's going to come in and flash right there, and Curtis Martin just stops, completely freezes the defense, and then breaks it right back out into the spot that Lance Johnstone left. I mean, that is tremendous instinct as a runner. Curtis Martin, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that run right there. Starting to bring his average per carry up. He was at 1.9 late in the second quarter. First and 10 from the 47. Hole opens up. Martin gets through it for a couple. John Swift, 51. Lance Johnstone there. Temple. Curtis Martin. He's a junior. He's out of Alderdice High School in Pittsburgh, PA. And Panthers and Johnny Majors will continue to build with him next year. You know, the thing that's amazing about Curtis Martin to me is the fact that he was coming out of high school. He was regarded as one of the top running backs in Pennsylvania, but he only played one year of high school football. I mean, he didn't go out for high school football until he was a senior and still attracted that much attention in one year of playing. And he's a guy who is just continue to get better and better as he matured physically. You bet. He's got everything you want out of a top-notch back. Ryan hangs it up high, and nobody there. Threw it straight up in the air. Curtis Anderson was the guy they hoped to run under it. Well, Curtis Anderson has the speed to get there. He's a guy that they're happy to have back as a, as a wide receiver. He's been hampered most of the year by injuries, but John Ryan just kind of laid that one up in the middle of everybody, and Actually, is pretty lucky that one didn't end up being an interception because the ball really hung up there much too long. Panthers without Junior Green, without Dietrich Jones. Injuries have more than taken its toll on both of these clubs. Third and seven, balls at the 43. Pitt leading 14-10, draw to Martin. Doesn't get the first down. Johnstone stops him at the 40. Tim Terry there also. Lance Johnstone, he's got a younger brother who plays at Germantown High School here in Philadelphia who's highly regarded, attracted a lot of attention. Well, the thing about Lance Johnstone, when he hits you, you know that you've been hit. I mean, he, I, I, I make the point again, his ability to explode into tackle, and that comes from just great strength and, and instinct and explosiveness. And I tell you, when he hits you, you don't move forward too much more. Second straight possession. We've seen these teams go for it on fourth down. It's fourth and two at the 39. Play pocket two. Ryan, pop pass outside. Bill Davis doesn't get the first down. Let's see. They depend on the mark. It looks like they gave it to him. Wow. Happened right in front of us, and that could have gone either way. Boy, Bill Davis made the catch and was drilled by Phil Cox, number 33 out of Flemington, New Jersey. Phil Cox is going to come up with a great hit, but Bill Davis knows where the first down is, and right there when he catches it, his forward momentum, his progress, you can see the referee running in behind to mark the spot. That was beyond the first down mark, so good job by Bill Davis knowing what he needed for the first down. And about a couple of uh, inches to spare. 
Ball at the 37. Martin straight up the gut. Flipping and slide. First down. Pittsburgh. He's inside the 25. Picks up 15. Johnstone and Green prevent further damage. Boy, he's something else. He gets through the hole, sidesteps the guy, and then puts it back in the first gear. Yeah, and he's so shifty in such subtle ways that you don't really get that clean shot on him. You know, I mean, he, he's the kind of guy that avoids the direct hits. Watch, just kind of turns his shoulders, turns his hip, kind of jumps back and forth in the hole and turns it into a big run. Remarkable. Give it to Martin again. It opens up in the middle. He finds room and gets to the 15. T. Lang Lloyd went for a ride. Picks up eight on that one. So his numbers starting to take off. Curtis Martin had a slow first half. And there you see it right there. Such a major portion of the offense. 42% involvement by Curtis coming into today's game. He had a 908 yards coming into the ball game. So, I mean, he was close to getting 1,000. If he gets 12 more yards, we've just been told from down the truck, 12 more yards, and he goes over 1,000. Big hole left side, Billy West. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. 15-yard run, and the Panthers lead it 20 to 10. Big block by Curtis Anderson. Pitt fans who made the trip. Second touchdown for the afternoon for Billy West. Well, the Panthers coming right back. They've had 20 unanswered points now. Well, nice job. They give Curtis Martin the rest. They bring Billy West in. He's got the fresh legs, and he bursts right through the hole. He does a nice job running off the left side. Again, running off left tackle Reuben Brown. Big hole indeed, and Calvinetti's extra point is good. 21-10 Pittsburgh. Panthers have done well in this series. Won two straight and four of the last five to lead the series 18-4 and one all time against the Temple Owls, including 10 out of 12, uh, 10 wins out of 12 games here at Vet Stadium. Good looking drive. After Temple is held on a fourth and 12. Panthers go eight plays, 62 yards. And again, it's the run defense. That, that's the story of these two teams and the story of the struggles that continues to be a stunner there. Michigan up big on Ohio State. And Yale leading Harvard. Final uh, game, the coaching career, the great coaching career of Gerald Restick, the Harvard coach, 27 years. It leads it 21-10 as Kevin Leon kicks off. 24 seconds to go. And they'll dribble it down. Frederick at the 10. Ooh, a mistake going airborne. Chad Duke, number 40, met him in a penalty flag on the play. Larry Walding ailing in front of the Temple bench. He's being helped off with a monster hit. That's the hit of the day by Chad Dukes. <laughs> Illegal block in the back. Going to run back. A 10-yard penalty from the spot of the from the end of the run. Michigan has just opened up a 28-nothing lead on Ohio State. Chad Dukes, no more calls. We have a winner. Watch this. Bang! Well, once you leave your feet like that, I mean, you're, you're pretty vulnerable. There's no way to avoid the hit, and Chad Dukes. I mean, it's craziness on kickoff coverage. It's one guy running down the field full speed. It's another guy running with the ball full speed. And when you're talking about Jeff Frederick, you're only talking about a guy who weighs 160 pounds. So, yeah. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of weight in his drawers <laughs> to be jumping up in the air like that. <laughs> Chad Dukes goes through 15. Chad hit me. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Temple in a hole, down 21-10, ball at their own 14. Now they got a throw, and they're throwing it to the wind for another few seconds. And Danny Davis, I think uh, the pit players, uh, 
Hasselick and Bart think they understand the nature of this offense now. Well, and also, you talked about momentum and how does it show up. Where do you see it? You see it on defense. You see it, guys, flying to the football. If they get blocked, you see them getting off block and running to the football. We saw it in the first half by Temple. We're seeing it now by the Pitt defense. Pitt in command right now after three quarters by the score of 21 to 10. Two touchdowns, one by Martin, one by West here in the third. We'll be back to the vet after these words from our local stations. HDF's Toyota Redskins Report wants you to be a member of their studio audience. Happiest fans in this ball yard, the Pitt fans in that sun-drenched area across the way at midfield here at the Vet. As the Temple Owls prepare to continue this drive. Second down and eight at the 16. Dave Sims and Todd Blackledge with you in the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week, the finale of our 1993 package. Owls in a hole. They do have one thing going for them right now. The wind is at their back. Run the delay. Danny Davis. Nothing doing. The TD Moody, number 48. They lose three. And there you see evidence of that momentum shift. Pitt's got it. Temple does it. Well, this is a great play by Moody. They're trying to run the counter trap. They're going to pull the guard and the tackle. Tenner and Trey Johnson. Zatini Moody, nobody blocks him. Tenner and Johnson run right by him. Zatini Moody just waits for Davis to get there and then springs across the line of scrimmage and makes the play. Zatini Moody out of Patterson, New Jersey's East Side High School. The numbers through three. Total yards pit taking over. Almost a 100-yard advantage. Burst. And a five-time throw. Might there be a flag? No, sir. The intended receiver was Israel, Doug Whaley with the play. So nothing happening on that drive for Temple. Bring up a fourth and 11, and they'll have to punt. John Shea, last couple of punts have not been beauties. It'll be his fourth one. Jay Jones will have a chance to return. And it was at this end of the field Glenn Tenner had a bad snap. Shea did a good job to flag it down and prevent further difficulty. Difficulty. Let's see what happens here. Play clock at seven. High snap. This punt not a good one either. Johnny Majors waving his ball club away from it. They're going to be in excellent position at the 42-yard line. Three straight bad punts by John Shea. This one only 29 yards. He went for 36, 25, and 29. 14.03 to go here in the fourth period at the Vet. We'll return after these messages. It's about an unlucky sky here in Philadelphia. 21-10 Pittsburgh with the lead. The Panthers have scored 21 unanswered points after Temple took a 10-0 lead. That lead coming back in the second quarter. You know, an interesting thing about this series, Dave, you look at the Pitt press release and they list that they lead the series 17-5-1. Temple lists that Pitt leads 18-4-1. Of course, the game in 1986, Temple won 19-13, but later forfeited because of the Paul Palmer incident here at Temple. Curtis Martin trying to spin out of trouble. Bubu was uh, was uh, ruled uh, an ineligible player at the end of the season. He's a great running back here for the Owls. Sure was. Though. Very exciting player. Had a chance to play with him for a couple say, years yeah. in Kansas, Kansas City, City as well. Second down and nine for John Ryan and the Pitt Panthers. Looking to put a chokehold on this game. They're up 21-10. 13.25 to go in the ballgame. Temple really going with almost all man-to-man -man coverage, really trying to sell out. Completed outside. Grace Washington catches the ball. Number 22, the fullback, and gets up limping. John Swift. Lance Johnstone are there. They make the play for Temple. Temple going with a lot of blitzes here. They've been hurt in the running game here, particularly in the second half, and they're putting a lot of people up around the line of scrimmage. There's some plays, big plays in the passing game out there for John Ryan. 
if they come in from the sideline. Third short, all at the 35. Martin with the call, and he drags the pile down to the 30-yard line. First down, hit. You know, I think the thing that Johnny Majors was so upset with at halftime is, is last week, the game against BC, he said, was the first time that he really felt that his team kind of gave in, Did, didn't play as hard as they could. They played hard all year, and even though it's been a tough season, they never stopped playing hard. But last week, uh, they really didn't seem to have the same attitude towards the game, and that's what it looked like early in the first half of this ball game as well. But since about the six-minute mark of the, of the second quarter, this team has really played a much better game. Central showing blitz. Eight men in the box. First and ten at the 30. Curtis Martin stops. Tony Angelo there. Dean of one. Tony Angelo, number 93, number 90, uh, Tony Angelo, number 20, Scott Holland, 93, when you and Lance Johnstone. When you commit this many people to the line of scrimmage, Tony Angelo is a free safety. There's just not enough white shirts to block them. You've got more defenders than you do blockers in there. That's when you have to either go play action or throw the football because you only got two or three guys out there playing pass defense. Curtis Martin now at 994 yards for the season. Evan Temple is ripe for play action here. Tony Angelo up close again. They run the play action indeed. They got a man wide open. It's Anderson down near the end zone and it's picked off by Bill Cox. Touchback. Temple takes over. They went for the play action, but Ryan with a bad throw and the pick by Bill Cox. Well, whenever you're throwing a post pattern, which, you know, which this is, now they got the protection, they pick up the blitz, it's man-to-man. -man. John Ryan needs to throw this ball away from the defender. Let his, his receiver, Curtis Anderson, run away from the defender. Don't throw it back over his outside shoulder where the defender has a better chance to make the play. And Ron Dickerson, being a former defensive back himself and a secondary coach, awful happy that they came up with a stop there. I think he's disappointed he wanted the touchback. And they give him uh, the spot at the one-yard line. That's why he's angry, too. That's that's remarkable. Wow. That was the first interception for Phil Cox, and I thought he was okay. I thought he was okay with his momentum. We'll take a look and see what happens. Well, here's the play again. You can see Phil Cox is going to catch it. He catches it. His feet are still off the ground. His foot's going to come down right on the one-yard line, and that's where they give him the football. That's, that's a tough call right there. Momentum. That, I guess that's a pro rule. They, the pros, they usually give you that momentum. And I've seen them give it to an interceptor in the college ranks, too. Interesting call. Yeah, I'm actually thinking Phil Cox made a great decision in going ahead and downing the ball in the end zone instead yeah. of trying to run it out. Sure. As it turns out, he may have been further ahead trying to run the football out of the end zone. Second down. Trying to get it outside. Max breaks the tackle of Tumulty. Keeps going. Gets outside. A bit run as he's finally pushed out of bounds by Maurice Williams. A big gainer for Raphael Mack. Picks up 34 yards on that play. And that's huge to take it out from your own one yard line and in two plays to be out near the 50 yard line. Raphael Mack who's had a couple hundred yard games this year himself does a nice job following the block. John Summerday the center just a great block tenacious block stayed right with it all the way down the field Raphael Mack just got right in his hip pocket and ran out there with it smart move big game officially they're gonna call it now 28 yard gain and it gets Temple out of the hole no doubt about it ball at the 35 out down by 11 21 10 you see the time remaining coming with the reverse Frederick right side got some good blocks he ran a long way to pick up a yard. He did about 51 yards to pick up one. Gerald Simpson, did you hear some defensive coaches, don't dance with him, <laughs> cut him off. Virginia Tech, this is a pretty good ball game here. 17-10. BC over Notre Dame. Battle for South Carolina. Love these traditional rivalries today. You got the West Coast games will come in later. Michigan, 28-0. Burris going back to pass. The TD Mooney, the TD Mooney makes the play. What a play. Outstanding. Read the screen, played the screen, and made the pick. Tried to get it to Danny Davison again to the well too often. 
for Temple. You're exactly right. Read the screen and ended the screen. And really, he's the guy who made the play on the reverse, too. Two great plays in a row. Look, reads it, gets his hand in it, and then stays with it. Does a little volleyball routine there. Tips it up in the air to himself a couple times. But it really, the, the play was made by him just feeling the screen, reading the screen, and getting right into the throwing lane of the tailback. T.D. Moody coming out of Patterson, New Jersey. You know he spent some time on the playground, so that basketball uh, background coming in handy. Good play. Talk about that when you're trying to make an offensive rebound, just keeping it alive <laughs> up on the backboard. That's what he did there. Kept it alive until he could snag it. Tip drill. And they're going to run with the reverse. Anderson. Perry had a chance to make the play, and he's bailed out by John Swift. Tim Terry had a chance to have a major loss. As it was, it was a loss of three. Terry is bailed out by number 51, John Swift. Well, both teams have tried to run a reverse here right after each other. Neither one of them successful. You can see it was a long developing play. By the time Anderson had the football, good penetration already by the Temple defense. You want to run a reverse, want to play when a team is really pursuing quickly and they're running with the run fake. That time Temple stayed at home, got penetration across the line of scrimmage and stopped the play. Pit up 21-10. Curtis Martin, six yards shy of 1,000 yards for the season. And he gets about two there. So he'll be about four yards shy. Extra pushing. Tim Terry this time gets in and completes the play. Curtis Martin. What do you figure? First, to, Darnell Campbell probably has locked up one running back spot in the Big East. You got the Miami backs are pretty good. You got this guy. Somebody, it's going to be a tough choice to do the uh, all Big East uh, running back, running backs. Well, I think this guy is. You know, you got Robert Walker at West Virginia sure. who's really coming on. But I think this guy. You know, he is so much a huge part of this offense. I mean, he gets the ball so often. And he's got to be an all Big East performer. Big screen left, come back right. Martin picks up a block against the grid. Look at that. He made something. There was nothing there. There was nothing there. Curtis Martin comes up with a positive yard as John Swift tripped him up. Yeah, I think the fact that he's almost virtuoso effort every week has got to weigh heavily in your decision to who to vote for as the top back among the top backs. And defensive teams have to be keying on Curtis Martin. I mean, you just can't go into a game against Pitt not keying on him, but he continually finds ways to make plays and move the chains. And there's another great indication. Pitt up by 11, 8, 15 to go. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and seven. Ryan, ball sails on him, and he was trying to get it to Bill Davis. And in completion, Temple will take over. He's throwing into the wind. That's why they... Uh, did not decide on the kick for the field goal and figured maybe they could take a shot. The wind has been a factor this afternoon, no question about it. The wind is blowing from the right to the left. Pittsburgh up by 11, coming into the final eight minutes. We'll be back to the vet after these words from our local station. It's the 25th anniversary Subaru year-end clearance. That means unbeatable savings on today's value leader level. In spite of the fact that the Owls are down by 11, 21-10 here at Vets Stadium in South Philly, 809 to go in the ball game. Season finale for both clubs. Both teams love to, would love to finish on an up note. And Pitt with the win can avoid last place in the Big East. Notre Dame on the board, down by three now. This should be one heck of a finish. Here's Burris back to throw underneath. Catch by Ramondo Davidson. Knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Gain of 12 on that play. John McCray there, number 67 for Pittsburgh. That's a first down for the Owls, and they need a lot of them. They need points even more. Henry Burris, again, this is his developmental stage. I mean, it's the last game of the year, but this is his fourth start. Standing in the pocket, getting the ball to his wide out, Ramondo Davidson. You know what, this bodes well. Look at 8 for 18. I mean, not scintillating, but based on what Temple's had at quarterback the last couple of three years, these are good numbers. He avoids trouble there. Delivers. Caught. Davidson in the temp pit territory. Back down at the 36. First down out. That's a big-time play by Henry Burst. 24-yard pickup. Now, Martin Seagraves were pressuring him, but Henry gets out of trouble. 
This is a great play by Burris. Tom Bart's going to get immediate pressure right up the gut, and that's the worst place to get pressure if you're the quarterback. But all Burris did was kept backpedaling. He just kept moving backwards and backwards. Bart never got a hold of him, and then he kept his presence and saw what was happening downfield and stood right up in there and threw the ball. Beautiful throw to David. Sure did. Going to his left. Look in pass. Oh, good effort. But Davidson couldn't hold on. Jim Williams got a piece of him and pretty much ended that play. Burris, though, showing it some good ability to keep the play alive, obviously, and can throw the ball running to his left. Something you can build on. 21-10 Pittsburgh. Panthers with two third-quarter touchdowns to take the lead. 7.29 to go in the ball game. Going for it all. Frederick in the end zone. No, sir. Drew the double coverage from Mosley and Williams. And you know, this is the exact same kind of throw that John Ryan made a couple series ago when he threw the interception. You're throwing the post pattern. You want to put the ball in a place where your receiver can run away from the defender. There is no middle safety, so throw it away from the defender. Don't throw it back over the outside shoulder because then the receiver has to turn and go through the defender to get to the football. Burris with the play now. They need a big one. Third down and 10 for Temple. Ball at the pit, 36. Quick count, delay, Mack to the 30, 25, and he's got the first down. On the draw, Raphael Mack, Doug Whaley brings him down, 12-yard pickup. Raphael Mack delivered a good blow at the end of that play to make sure he got the first down. Well, again, they go to the delay draw, but this time the reason it opens up is because they've been throwing the ball. They've been going straight drop back. Now they come back and make it look the same way, but they run the delay draw, and Raphael Mack makes a big play. Five carries, 50 yards. Here he is. Here he is. Ferris got a man there. Caught Tim Israel inside the 15. First down out. 12-yard pickup. Maurice Williams is there for the stop. They'll call it a 13-yard gain, and the Owls are moving. Well, this is a blitz by Pitt. Henry Burris is going to read the blitz, and he's going to stand right in the teeth of it and throw the little slant route to Tim Israel. He's going to get hit at the end of the play. Israel does a nice job going up in the air and catching the football. Normally, when you come across the middle and you have to go up in the air, you don't want to come down with it. There's Sid Morris making the catch. Rode out of bounds by Simpson at the five. That's an impressive drive, which started at the 29-yard line for Temple. Henry Burris has been very effective here in this drive, and on the game, he's 11 for 23. And if you're uh, Temple and Henry Burris right now, you don't have to go into your two-minute hurry-up offense, but you don't want to waste time in the huddle. You want to get in and out. You want to get up and, and save as much clock as you can because you still have to score twice to win the football game. Burris, four for six on this possession. Second and three, Al stumbled back in the hole, hit and spins out. Update from South Bend, Ivan Boyd, another TD catch from Glenn Foley, 17-7 Eagles over Notre Dame. Boy, that'll really scramble things in college football if the Eagles were to hold on and win. Well, I've said it many times, Glenn Foley at this point in time in the season is playing as good as any quarterback in the country. Straight up the gut goes Morris. Nice effort down to the one yard line. And that's a first and goal for Temple. Tom Tumulty, Simpson, they're there, but went for a ride. See, now right now the clock is at 523. It stops until they reset the chains. Henry Burst needs to get his team in and out of the huddle quick. Save as much time as they can. They don't have to run the two-minute offense, but don't waste time now because you got to get the ball back, and your team hasn't really stopped Pitt yet that much. you got to get the ball back, and you got to put another drive together. They get the extra tight ends in. Play clock at 10 seconds. Some confusion. The person with the water bucket had gone into the game, <laughs> and now they got to call timeout. It's amazing how the, there's been so much confusion trying to get this play in. Five minutes even left in this ball game. Temple at the one-yard line, down 21-10. We'll be back after these messages. What do you do?
do after you introduce the first compact flare side on the planet. You make an even bigger splash, announcing the Ford Ranger Splash Super Cab. Now the cool original also comes in a more spacious rendition. The 1994 Ford Ranger Splash and Splash Super Cab. Now how big a splash you make is up to you. Temple students start extremely well motivated. I'm an engineering major. I'm a business major. I'm a journalism major. I've learned so much. Professors know their stuff. It's top-notch faculty. There's so many new people here. I'm from Chicago. I'm from California. I'm from Columbia. South America. I studied in London for a semester. I'll be teaching at our campus in Tokyo. It's a place where you can grow. A new recreation and convocation center. I've met the Temple Challenge. It's the best decision I ever made. Air travel for this Biggie's telecast was arranged through U.S. Air with more than 2,500 flights a day throughout the United States, Canada, Europe, and the Caribbean. Everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. Temple knocking at the pit door. And the thumping's pretty loud. I'll tell you what, though, they have huddled a long time on the sideline to figure out this play. They're at the one-yard line, first and goal. And uh, I was wondering if the... You know, taking so much time, it's almost like you're trying to reinvent the atom. Well, I think that the biggest problem is you, you get in there and you and you run this whole drive with regular personnel, a tight end, two running backs, two wide receivers, and you get inside the one-yard line and you can't make a quick decision whether you want to keep that people in or bring in your power formation. And a left uh, defensive, make that the tight end left side move, George Carianis. So after all of that, you get an illegal procedure to ruin the play. Davis and turn the corner. Al Hines and his crew sorting things out. This undoubtedly will go against the Owls. Good ball, encroachment on the offense. Will the timer please for three seconds additional on the clock? We'll go back to the five minute mark. Nick Gasparato sending in Ray Johnson. Jimmy Williams going off. He's a little woozy. And again, one of the signs of a team and a program that is struggling is how do they handle things when they get inside the scoring territory, inside the 20-yard line. And both these teams have struggled, and that's why they struggle scoring points because they can't, you know, they can move the ball pretty well between the 20s, but once you get inside that 20, you have to be extremely efficient. And right now, neither team has been that efficient in the scoring territory. Came into the field, pin on his first drive, got down there and got nothing. Throw it, man's wide open. Kyrianis cuts down Temple. So Kyrianis, who had the encroachment, comes right back for the score. Good play, good call. And again, great work by Henry Burris, buying himself a little time because when he comes out of this play action fake, there are pit defenders right at his face. And again, he does a smart thing. Watch, he's going to come out of the fake. Now here's the defense, and he just keeps backing up, just keeps backing away from the defense, and then lofts it right over their head, and Kerry Ennis comes down with the catch. Nice poise by Henry Burris with two people coming right in his face has the presence to kind of just backpedal and drop the ball right oh, over their head. The veteran offensive lineman looks like they want to go for two. Some confusion on the field. Well, again, they've got to hurry or they're going to deal with the play clock again. You bet. Now. It's like 18 seconds now. And they're going to go for two. Not very good clock management right here. Now see what happens. You got to run up to the line. You got to Six hurry seconds. up and call the play. Power eye formation. Roll out. Burris got a man in the end zone. Two pointer. Well done by Temple. Danny Davis is there. And the Owls put on two more. So it's 21 to 18. Danny Davis with the catch hurt himself, but made a good catch. And a good play action fake by Henry Burris. Well, again, they got the playoff right before the clock. Little play action again. They get Burris out on the perimeter where he can make a play. And there's Danny Davis. Now, Kerry Annis does a nice job kind of with his body, shielding off both defenders. And that allows Davis to come down with the catch. A lot of excitement here, building last few minutes of the season here. Temple down by three. We're back after these messages. It's tough being a fan when your team isn't the home team. 
especially when I try to find coverage of my favorite team in the local paper. I'm lucky if I can find last week's score. But if you're like me, you'll be happy to know there's one publication that'll make you feel right at home. The Sporting News. You'll love the Sporting News, no matter what team you love, even if it is the home team. Call this number now and get four issues of the Sporting News free. You'll get opinions and analysis, team-by-team -team reports, and coverage of all the college conferences. Plus baseball, basketball, and hockey all year long. Call now and you'll get four free issues of the Sporting News. If you like them, you'll get 24 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just mark the bill, cancel, and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. So call now for the Sporting News, the publication that treats every team like the home team. Call now and you'll get four great issues of the Sporting News free. Call 1-800-346-4500. Temple Owls putting up eight points on the board to take a uh, to cut the deficit to three points. And a fine effort by Henry Burris. Good play faking. Good catches by Kerry Ennis and Davis. So let's see what happens. We could have a doozy of a finish here as the Norse mostly is deep to receive. Pitt is waiting for an onside kick. I don't think you need to kick an onside kick at this point. Go ahead and kick the football. There's four minutes and 54 seconds left in the ball game, and just hope that your defense can stop them. I say kick deep, play an eight-man front, and stop the run, and force, if they're going to beat you, force John Ryan to beat you throwing the football. So far, Ryan has not exactly had the hot hands. Temple on that drive on 10th place, 71 yards. Really probably the biggest play of the drive was made by Henry Burris when he eluded the, the quick rush by Tom Barnt, bought himself some time, rolled out to the left, and hit Ramondo Davidson down the field for a big play. Mastin kicking with the win. Kick it into the end zone and out. Touchback. It'll have to go 80 yards here. Panthers only up by three. Then plays 71 yards, 3.15 off the clock. Kerry Ennis, the pass from Burris, and then Burris hit Davis with a two-pointer. Make it 21-18. Well, it's no real mystery right here. You know what Pitt's going to do. They're going to give the ball to Curtis Martin. He needs four more yards to gain 1,000 yards for the season. They're going to give it to him. They're going to try to make some first downs and run out the clock. Pitt going with two tight ends. Pitt's got three times that left. Temple one. Here's Martin. They string it out. He turns the corner. 1,000 yards, and he could be gone. Down the sideline. Kyle Glassberg. See you later. 80 yards. Curtis Martin. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Oh, brother. And everybody up close, he got the corner, and he was gone. yards with everybody up tight. Can you believe that? <laughs> He's the man. Yeah, he can put his hands on his hips. 80 <laughs> yards. Wow, 15 seconds. And did you see the burst at the end of this play? He's been carrying it all day, and he doesn't look tired. He gets to the corner. They secure the corner. Bill Davis, the wide receiver, gets a great block on the outside. Now, look at this. He outruns two defensive backs who have the angle on him. Curtis Martin is in great condition. It's the last four minutes of the game, and he doesn't look any slower than when the game started. That is an outstanding performance. Extra point by Kelman Edies, and just that quick. Get the Temple, gets to within three. Martin breaks a big one, 80 yards. It gives him... 167 yards rushing on 29 carries, two touchdowns, and eight catches. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Well, we called it. They were going to give it to Curtis Martin, and Temple's in a blitz look. And Tony Angelo, the free safety, can't get out to make the play. He's the last line of defense, number 20. You saw his feet got tangled up in a block in there, couldn't get back outside, and then it was off to the races for Curtis Martin. If you're going to put that many people up around the line of scrimmage, you got to make sure you make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Boy, what a heart uh, breaker for Temple, and what a lift. Tremendous lift for Pittsburgh. 80-yard run, and 
Temple thought it was right back in the game. Now they got it. The hill just gets bigger for the Owls. They're down by 10 again. Curtis Martin over a thousand yards, which is a tribute to him, a tribute to the offensive line. The first time a pit back has gone over a thousand since Swerve and Curve and Richards did it back in 1989. Tell you what, if he didn't solidify all East and all Big East with that performance, this performance this afternoon, I don't know. Well, he's on my all Big East team. Amen. <laughs> He does a little bit of everything. He sure does. Kick it right down. Sideline. It stays in bounds. Oh, he runs it out of bounds. Can you believe that? That number 38 for Temple. Number 38 for Temple is Ted McDuffie. Back up defensive back. Could have done better to let it go out of bounds. Well, instead of having it at the 25-yard line, now it's going to have it at the 35. So Pittsburgh has exploded. 80 yard run by Curtis Martin. Temple had just gone 71 yards on 10 plays and a two point conversion to make it 21 18, but that changes in a hurry. Tom Bart chases Burris out of the pocket. Downfield he goes, picks up the first down and runs out of bounds. Tell you what, Burris has a chance to be a very exciting player. 13 yard pickup. Does a lot of good things. Yeah, he, he's really showing more and more development as the season goes on. He's a young guy that I think Ron Dickerson right now has got to be real pleased with what he's seeing, a guy that he can build on for the future. And, and the thing that, that you can see about Henry Burris is the team responds to him. I mean, he has a certain amount of charisma, a certain amount of poise, and the teammates around him respond to him. And I think that, that when you can be like that, when you have that effect, you, you cause players to rise up a notch and play a little bit better. Martin in the face of Ferris gets rid of it, saves the loss. That's a good play. Zatidi Moody, Tom Barner there. It's intended for Danny Davis. Hey, what? Tom Barn is another fine football player. This is a guy that just keeps playing hard. Play after play, game after game. Notre Dame back in it, 17-14. Alabama leading at Auburn. The draw to Davis. Breaks out of a tackle. It's up to the 42-yard line. Gerald Simpson, Tom Tumulty get credited with the stop. What a blowout. Michigan killing Ohio State. Boy, back in your home state of uh, Ohio, that's not going to go over real big. John Cooper will incur more wrath than what we talked about in our open. Uh, I tell you, this was the year for Ohio State. I mean, that's what everybody thought, and really, uh, I thought, too, they had the talent. We saw them in the opener against Pittsburgh. That's a good football team. Michigan has their number today. Boy, right through the hands of Davidson at the 44. That's a good throw. It should have been caught. The Cray covering for Pittsburgh. Put right on the money by Henry Burris. Here's the play again. Their little crossing route and a good throw by Burris. Davidson maybe just took his eye off it a little too quick. He felt the footsteps, felt Maurice Williams coming from the outside, turned just a little bit to see the see where the defense was coming from and dropped the football. Fourth and six. Frederick. Oh, he runs backwards. Can you believe that? He had the first down if he just falls down. He didn't have to make a big play. He just had to make the play. Yeah, you're exactly right. He was beyond the first down yardage marker right here. If he falls down, it's a first down. But he takes the step backwards. And because he initiates that movement and then doesn't get back beyond the first down mark, the ball is turned over to Pittsburgh. That should pretty much do it. 28-18 pit in the lead with 3.39 to go. And the Panthers will take over. Trying to loop it up on the far side for Pittsburgh. And Ron Dickerson and his staff, they're probably talking to themselves up here in the blue band down on the sideline. Tough play. Billy West. I just keep pounding it through now. You know, we talked about before this game started that this was a game that both teams really desperately needed to win, and both teams felt that they could win. And really, the, 
but both teams have been in a position to win the ball game today. I mean, that last touchdown by Curtis Martin, truly the backbreaker in this ball game. But Temple was in position, as was Pitt, to win this football game here in the last five minutes. Indeed. Three-yard pickup by West. Second and seven at the 44 with 3.05 and counting left in the 93 season for both teams. Ryan going to milk the clock. This is Miles Davis, number two. He gets down to the 40-yard line. You know, even though Pitt holds a commanding lead in this series, this has been a pretty hard-fought series between these two teams. Last year here in the stadium, in the bet, Alex Van Pelt drove his team 80 yards in the last two Come minutes. Out, Temple. That's Drew the third and final time in two games. Threw a touchdown pass with 13 seconds left in the ballgame to win. So uh, this is a, a pretty good rivalry here between the two schools from Pennsylvania. Indeed. In fact, Raymond Pelvin, number 80 from Pitt, had a career day. Had about seven or eight catches. But there's the man, number 29, Curtis Martin. Over the 1,000-yard mark for the season, 28-18 is our score. Tough times indeed for both of these clubs. There are only 106 teams playing Division I football, so that you read the story from there. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory there, and obviously both Ron Dickerson and Johnny Majors have a lot of work ahead of them, and that work will begin... <laughs> As soon as this ball game is over, uh, they've already been recruiting, as all programs are across the country, but it'll begin in earnest as soon as this ball game's over. Well, they're hoping for a second flight towards the national championship in Pittsburgh. And the Pitt Panthers en route now to finishing up 3-8 and eight and 2-5 and five in the Big East. There's great confidence that Johnny Majors can do it again at Pittsburgh, but I'll tell you what, it won't be ooh, face mask. It'll be much more difficult than it was the first time with the reduction in scholarships. I mean, you just can't rebuild as quickly as you used to be able to rebuild. Tim Terry knows he's the guilty part party on that one, pulling a face mask. That's right, when Johnny was uh, here the first time around, he was able to bring it, what was it, run on 170 players or something, red shirt at half, and I mean, it was an extraordinary number, and they just had a tremendous stockpile of players. Yeah through it all. They were able to pluck a couple of premier players out of that. I mean, there were a lot of guys that didn't stick around for four years and make it, but... One yard face mask on the defense and forced from the previous spot. First down. But it only takes one or two guys like Tony Dorsett to turn a football program around, and that's, uh, that's what he was able to do back there when he first came to Pitt. And the people in Pittsburgh hoping to see it again. Right, it was amazing. You get the one super dynamic back, and everybody said, hey, I'd like to block for him. I'd like to play with him, you know? That's all it takes. And that Ron Dickerson hoping for that same type of lightning to strike here in Philly. Clock at 2.14 and counting. Miles Davis getting more action, plus 35. Boy, what a contrast. Not that many people here in the ballpark today. Maybe 3,500 tomorrow will be a tough ticket. Four o'clock start, Eagles, Giants. And the fire marshal will be asked to look the other way because they're going to get about 70,000 in here and it holds about 67, 68. John Ryan and the Pitt Panthers looking at victory. Blake Bach at six. Billy West. So it'll be a disappointing end to the 93 campaign for the seniors at Temple University while the Pitt seniors go out on an up note. You know, you're talking about the seniors too. There's 15 here at Temple that are closing out their career, but six of them came in together as freshmen in 1989. They all redshirted, played five years. Ramondo Davidson, Scott Holland, Trey Johnson, Dean Shoulders, Glenn Tinner, and Joe Wenzel. Those six have been through some, some tough times, but they'll come out of this experience, I think, four years or five years of playing football here at Temple as better people. Yep. I mean, they will know how to deal with adversity down the road in their lives. John Stone with the tackle. They'll have fond memories of the 90 season when the Owls went seven and four. Had some big wins over Virginia Tech and East Carolina, a good East Carolina club with Jeff Blake that year. 
Robert Jones, middle linebacker. And that'll do it. Curtis Martin finishes the day. 29 carries, 167 yards, two touchdowns. He also had eight pass receptions for 83 yards. About two and a half games for some people. <laughs> well, we said he was going to, they were going to make up for that one game they missed when he was out with an injury. And Curtis, we're going to make up for that one today. Get it up around 50% for the year. That means about 85% of the offense today is going to be on your shoulder. Tell you what, you'll see Curtis Martin on a lot of preseason magazines next year this time because he is one of the top backs in the country. You know, and the, and the best thing about it is he only missed that one game. You know, I mean, this is a guy who in his past has had some injury problems, really upgraded his training regimen this offseason, came back in better shape, came back stronger, and was able to be much more durable through this season than he was his first two seasons. Well, the rebuilding's about to begin big time for both of these clubs. A happy flight back to pit. No doubt about it. Ron Dickerson and his crew. Talk about Curtis Martin being an all Big East performer. I think another primetime performer has been our technical director this year, Dennis Lanius. He's the captain of our special teams without question. <laughs> Yeah, he, would, he probably would fit pretty well on the kickoff team, and I'm sure you'd be looking for it, too. <laughs> and there you have it, Johnny Majors with an upbeat note, ending the 93 season with a 28-18 win here at the Vet Stadium in Philadelphia. Curtis Martin, magnificent, 167 yards. Our post-game show will follow after these words from our local station.